All right, what's up everybody? So today's episode, basically we're gonna go over the 2023 year as far as motorcycles are concerned. Uh, we got some questions that you guys asked us to answer and we're gonna go over what we're gonna do for 2024. So uh, grab yourself a beer, cold one, Coca-Cola, milk, whatever, and uh, stay tuned. Just wanna start this video off by saying thank you for everyone that subscribed. It's been officially like a year now. I think when we started talking about this was in As far December. as YouTube, right? Yeah. So our one year on YouTube will be in like a week. By the time you guys see this, we'll officially have been on YouTube for a week. So I think this is like episode 50. So you missed two? Two That's weekly uploads. Thank you guys for the uh, all the love and support and sharing and everything. I mean, it's been a blast. So basically what we're gonna do on this episode, so we're gonna go over what kind of, I guess you guys could see on our YouTube channel, what 2023 was to us. Some of our highlights, what we felt was maybe that we didn't capture on the camera, or yeah. we didn't get to actually like discuss in the episodes. Uh, we're going to answer some of those questions that you guys asked us, and then we're going to go over what to inspect for to, what to expect for 2024 because I think it's already amping up to be. It's good. I think it's going to be less stressful. My my year is kind of stressful. Yours? Well, I mean, you still got a bike deal coming up, so. Yeah, but not as crazy. It's going to be pretty calm. Uh, we're also going to see how good Scott is on editing. Every time we talk about something, we're going to drop in a, a clip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try. Like that's my this. biggest 2024 goal is to get better. Um, I'm actually looking into better cameras. We're still shooting off a of GoPro. I know that's going to be one of the questions somebody asks is like, uh, what do we film with? Sometimes I'll throw in some iPhone clips. So most of the time it's GoPro. And to be honest, YouTubers in today's world are getting better and better and better. I mean, that part I know nothing about. It, and I watch a lot of YouTube and I see them, they're doing it from their phone and it doesn't look that bad. Cletus does it from the phone and yeah. it looks and good. That's how I noticed. Yeah. yeah. So we definitely want to get better on the editing side, also with just um, the footage in general. Um, I would say, like, the first half of this kind of uh, journey, if you will, it, it was hard to want to be somewhere and pull the camera out and not feel stupid. You know what I mean? Because we're not 20 year old. I, I still feel stupid. Yeah, I still feel stupid. Don't get me wrong. But, I was in Born Free California with the camera because that was like the, the, that whole trip. I had a, it was on me kind of, even though Jeremy helped me out a bunch with it. But, and Sturges. You did the camera. And Sturges. Yeah. Which I sucked at the weather and all that shit. It's like, anyways, it's weird pulling the camera out and talking to yourself basically out in the public. So I need to work on it. And that's like kind of one of my goals for this year is to be more involved with the whole channel and everything. My time's very minimal, not not time to film and shit, but like here, like right now we shut off both machines. I'm making no money, no chips and shit like that. So I don't know. It's gonna be hard, it's a hard balance. It's basically more involved when we're like riding and traveling. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely easier when it's kind of a little more low key and the smaller stuff, but I feel like the bigger stuff also, you gotta be a present, you gotta be present in it. You know what I mean? So it's hard to be a part of every conversation and every thing that's going on while you're also thinking in the back of your head, hey, we have a YouTube channel, we, need, we should be recording this, we should yeah. be recording that. It, it just, you know, it, it does get lost. And that's why we're hoping with today's episode, we kinda maybe will give a little bit of a backstory to some of the things that were not on the camera, obviously. Um, I feel like the FXR tour, we missed a lot of crime. Because I was so enjoying the moment. And same thing with like going to California and Surge. I just like to be there. I don't take pictures or I'm the worst at that. This, so. every trip, and you go back through his Instagram, it'll always say, went on this uh, fantastic trip, here's the photo I took. The photo I took, so. Wow. And it's always like the last day, like, oh, fuck, I didn't take a photo. Of his own bike. Yeah, like, <laughs> like gearing up even. <laughs> I guess let's start off, like 2023. I said, 2023. Give us your rundown of 2023 because um, I feel like. I'm going to get my phones because I kind of wrote notes of, like, things that happened, things that went on. I did not go to um, Mama Tribe last year, which I am going this year. Uh, so the, my show started off with, um, well, 2023 started off with a new machine, the mini mill. So that was uh, a big deal to me. I actually just made that payment before we started this video. <laughs> uh, so I got the new machine, which is crazy. It's a big milestone for me. Um, and then after that, I went to Daytona. That was just my wife and I that drove down there, huh? No, she flew in. She flew down. You went by yourself. You were in the truck by yourself. I ended up meeting you on the bike. You were already down there because you did Jacksonville first. You stopped in at the pre party, Adamac. 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 Yeah, Which Adamac, is an awesome Adamac. dealership. Super nice. And that's right because Rachel and them flew in. 
that I'm remembering everything. I have the worst memory in the world. But yeah, so we set up booths, and then Tony had stunt show in the back. It was a great time. I had a good time. Um, as far as like selling product and everything, it wasn't there. It was like basically all the industry people, but no customers, which is a, it's always a good time. Oh, and we went to that uh, with Clockworks and everybody. We had that. Uh, that was the night before. Yeah, you did an industry thing. The little industry party on top with the bar outside. It was super cool. That was a pre-party at Amac. There's a pre-pre like industry party before that at the bar, and then then actual Daytona, uh, which I'm not going to Daytona this year. The main reason I want to go is a hardcore show at uh, I guess it's at Teddy's now. Yeah. Um, yeah, Teddy bought the the dealership. So. Yeah. So I'm sad I'm going to miss it this year, but that's the best show. Like yeah. cars, like the performance baggers and bikes and all that. And then um, the hangover show, which is like an hour outside of Daytona. Which changed locations too. No. Mm -hmm. It was there it's, two years in a row. But it's going to be in Orlando this year. Oh, oh it's changed. I don't know yeah. about this year. Yeah, it's changing. Oh, Orlando. It's going to be a little closer. That's closer? Mm hmm Oh. I don't know about Florida. And then after that, we just haul ass back to load her up. So nothing special about that. Yeah. And then me... Right after Daytona I, in April, I always go to the hand-built show, which I probably will go this year again. Uh, I love it. It's kind of like set up like an art gallery. Uh, I don't know. And they always team it up with the GP races. And, uh, oh, I, last year, so I took the Mint Road Glide to the hand-built show. And then Jetty took his Dyna. We were both in it. And then we went to GP races. And then I also bought those two bikes from Tommy. Mm -hmm. I bought the Sportster and, and the, the Softail. The soft tail. Yeah. So also for those that don't know, the Handbill Show was also J uh, Justin's first time completely recording a YouTube. That was your first official like, it I handed you the camera. I gave it off to my son. Yeah, Hudson, <laughs> yeah, Hudson was down there. So those that don't know that the uh, Handbill Show is a kind of an invite show. It's not a... It's not just like, hey, you pay five bucks and enter your bike. It's it's no, you like like months prior, like normally in November, you would uh, like submit your bike, and then I kind of know him a little bit, just for over the years I've met him. But uh, yeah, you submit your bike, and then you get like the yay or nay of coming, and they sent you like a care package and a big poster saying you're invited. It's cool. The whole experience is very cool. And then like at the show, all the bikes are set up like an art gallery. Like there's lights just over your bike. Um, and then all the builders and stuff have like their own lounge in the back corner. They supply food and drinks and all that. It's super cool. And then also you have the GP races as well, but then all those guys normally come to the show as well. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a and great this is, time. This is your second one, right? No, it's my, of going? No, of having in the show, it? yeah. Third. Third? Yeah, so I had, the first one was the Zuccotti, that cafe racer. The second one was that uh, XS 650, that red long stretch one. And then the third one was, yeah, the mint bike. Oh, yeah. I, I knew the Zuccotti was in there. I didn't know the 650 was in there. That's yeah. cool. Uh, am I doing my whole year? I mean, I can, I guess we can kind of do it together. The same months. You know, start start the, the start of the year, obviously, I do yeah. the whole ride every year. So that was kind of like, our, I think, our third or fourth video. I so won. He did the first polar ride. I did, I missed the second one, which was in Oklahoma. We went back to Shreveport last year. Um, we actually have that pole ride coming up again, so you guys will get to see that again. Uh, but I went to that. That kicked off kind of my 2023 year. Uh, shortly after that, I did do Daytona, and it was a complete last-minute thing. And the only reason it was last-minute is Justin was giving me so much shit about it. Uh, he already pulled off. He left, and I was looking at the weather, and the weather actually, we had like a break in the weather. Because usually March in Arkansas could be hit or miss. It could be or a lot of rain. Rain with turns into ice. Yeah. The roads are nasty. Um, and we had like this break in the weather and I was looking at it and I was like, I, I think I'm gonna go. And I literally showed up, I hauled ass. I ended up meeting up with- Didn't you ride to your dad's first? Yes, so I met up with Sam and Susan from Two Wheel, Two Up Journey Junkies in my dad's town when riding. Side note, him getting bit by the snake at Poor the guy. hotel. It's terrible. So fucking hilarious at the same Breaks time. Breaks my heart. I wish, it, I wish they would have filmed that whole thing. All right, sorry. Well, I mean, he was out with us, <laughs> so I was out with him, and then he, I literally left the bar, so I don't remember what event Didn't the snake bite up in, like, the lobby? Yeah. I would own that fucking hotel. It was when he was reaching for his bags. He set his bags down. They checked in. When yeah. he was reaching to pick his bags up, got bit, ambulance, and they, they had an Airbnb. I, I, they didn't film none of that. No. 
Would have been great. No, they did film it. There's a small of the him in the hospital. And stuff. No, yeah, like the, I won't. Yeah, see there was none like, of the bite. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't know the bite was gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, like, like calling the ambulance, like in the lobby, like fucking yeah. just got hit. So I don't remember what event they were going to, but they came. They came into Arkansas or something, and I want to say it was Bikes Blues and Barbecue. I want to say I think they got a. It big was because they went down and back. Yeah, up. I think they got an Airbnb up there, and unfortunately. Had to cancel that whole trip, and then it actually messed Sam up for. It, it was way. I'm being funny about it, but the bite was way worse. Yeah. Than I would ever thought. Yeah. For a, and it was a baby snake too, but it was which a, are worse. Yeah. But yeah, I ended up meeting up with those guys in Warner Robins, and we rode from Warner Robins the next morning down to Daytona in the pouring rain. Uh, it sucked, but it was fun. It was from my first where? Warner? from Warner Robins. Where's that? It's a uh, where the Bucky's is in Georgia. So if you're on uh, I-75, yep. the big Bucky's in Georgia, it's my dad lives off that exit. So basically met up there, went to um, Daytona, showed up. As soon as we pull into Daytona, I'm trying to get my way to, everyone was already at the uh, B-Twin show was going on. When we pulled up, y'all were already all at the B-Twin show there at the Daytona International. I remember now, yeah. But we came, the traffic was so bad, we came a back road and we, we literally stumbled into a stunt show. So Concrete Cowboys, there was a, uh, uh, that whole group of guys, Sea Bear and all those dudes, were just stunting in this back neighborhood street that they randomly yeah. found. So you guys see some of that on the footage of that. If you go back and watch day one of Daytona, you'll see some of that. That was a uh, that was actually a really good show. I, I forgot about that one. Did you have, you know Beach and Vision? The Beach one show was good, and then you forgot about the fact that we went motocross, we watched motocross race, which was actually incredible. See, so sucks. for Daytona, that was the first like uh, motocross for me like, too, yeah, Supercross or Supercross, yeah. And then like Jeremy and Ben and all them, they like know all this. So they're explaining oh, they're the shit to bets. me. They, they're they explaining knew all it why it's happening. I didn't know all the fucking rules and shit. I didn't understand how all the heats work and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. that was super was cool. Because it started raining. Remember, we're standing on the side of the racetrack. Yep. I was like, I'm not leaving. Yeah, everybody's like, uh, hey, we're going to go watch motocross. So I'm thinking to myself like, okay, we'll watch some young kids ride dirt bikes. And they're like, all right, it's a $70 ticket. I'm like, wait, what? What, what am I watching? And then I think we paid another $40 to stand on the track. It's like a hundred oh, really? something bucks a ticket. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think it was going to be that cool. Oh, yeah. And then totally time two. It. Yeah. Yeah. But it was actually a really good time. So uh, then the next day, we left the, the B-Twin show was that day. The next day was the Hardcore show. The Hardcore show, of course, is always held at Destination Harley, which is now owned by Teddy, which yep. also owns Cowboy Harley. Teddy basically just bought every dealership car and motorcycle the last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, just, I've been watching him. He literally flies his jet and just buys another yeah, dealership he, every he, fucking He week. won a Powerball, I think, or something. <laughs> I don't know. He just bought everything up. So, uh, but uh, Good for him, though. That's awesome. The hardcore show was badass. That, Like I said, when you were talking, it was crazy because I've been to those shows before, and I've never seen the pavilion packed so much that the show went to the outside of the pavilion. Yeah. Literally, the Dyna, whole Dyna class was outside the... And the Dyna and FXR was normally where I park. Yeah. yeah. So they they made, had made, made you move. Yeah. And uh, because they were so packed. Um, they had Buells over there. We got to see that Rolling Sands prototype FXR yeah. wannabe. I have mixed emotions about this. I one. like it. I do like it. But I, I like a lot I, of stuff Roland does. I think Roland has a... He's a very creative... Yeah, but like, buy FXR. You did? He did. No. <laughs> Be your own thing, you know? Whatever. Uh, it is what it is. It, it probably won't even look like that when it goes into production. Yeah, I heard a bunch of issues with it. But anyways. Uh, so, yeah, Daytona was great. That was my first time. I've been to Daytona, uh, man, I don't know how many times. At least probably 10 times, and that was my first time ever riding all the way there and back. So uh, that was a lot of fun, and that kind of kicked my year off of going to Florida and back. So I went to the East Coast. Road back, I think after Daytona. What else happened? So we did the hardcore show, and then of course the performance show, the, the hangover, hangover show. show. After that, normally it's that's it for me. Um, well, and then there's also the bars downtown. You usually leave a little early, escorted out a little early. <laughs> we'll get. It in. wasn't me this time. Eh, it wasn't. Eh. It wasn't me this time. It wasn't him. Anyways, uh, I think this is my. That was my third, third or fourth year of ever going to Daytona. I'm going to skip it this year. It's a lot of time, money that I need to be here. I definitely understand the kind of business aspect of not going again this year. Yeah. But it does suck not to see everybody and say, hey, but yeah. man, there's just I so many I talked to Monty events. yesterday and that's what he was asking me. He bought a condo down there mm. on the uh, thing. Yeah, but he's there a lot. I mean, the, it makes got, sense for yeah, him. Teddy's pretty much got him on. That, if you don't know who Monty is, Monty, uh, Roach Customs, Pinstriper, you know, he's at pretty much every event, Suck Bang Blow, Sturges. That's his Daytona. career. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's his thing. And um, I think he's almost exclusively doing all of Teddy's stuff now, right? I don't know what they got going on, but yeah, he's there. He's doing a, a lot, lot of the, the Daytona So it makes bikes. sense for him to yeah. have a place there. And plus, he's having a baby, like, in the next week or two. So, uh, But yeah, leaving Daytona, uh, Daytona was awesome, but literally the weekend following that, I kind of helped Tony out by hosting a bike show at a stunt show he was doing in Texarkana. Um, that was, did you come home or go there? No, I, went, I came home. I was home for, because it was the following weekend. Okay. So I was literally home. Came back home on Tuesday from Daytona, and that Saturday we rode to Texas, and it's only about a two-hour ride from here. Went down there, hosted a bike show. There's also a video on here from that. Um, that was pretty cool, and that leads us into April, I believe. Yeah, so April for me was a uh, hand-built show. GP bought the two bikes. Oh, actually, no, there was more in March. We had uh, we did my Club Style, so I ran the Club Style Arkansas page for a while. I've kind of given it away, and it's... Is this still a thing? It's a open, it's a... So you between log. you and Tony, who has the most Instagram pages? <laughs> <laughs> I have three. I think Tony's got me beat. I don't know. Tony's got to have me beat. Plus Tony, I feel like Tony has a bunch of, uh, what do they call Secretive them? Secretive ones? Yeah, the... Uh, <laughs> Creepers? The creeper pages. <laughs> just to follow up on all his uh, endeavors. To like his own pages? <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> uh, but no, there was a, I did a little club style lunch at the Flyway Brewery. That was super cool. You, you came by, Hudson was actually on the... Hudson rode the little... Yeah, uh, yeah. He rode the Z down there. Uh, my wife and I took the Road Minty. King, and then, yeah, Hudson rode the Z. Yeah. So that was a cool little That was band. fun, and just hung out. That was a nice day, actually. Yeah, the it weather was perfect. Some... A lot of Northwest Arkansas guys came down, Kyle and all those guys. So that was actually a really good turnout. I think we had maybe, like, 20, 25 bikes. And I never... Whoops. I never Ooh. can remember the dude's name, but I've, I've seen him here in Fayetteville, but he has that orange uh, FXR. Uh, it's all, like... Original. I don't know his real name. It's Low Bob... S or something because he had a street bobby turned into a low rider. But I know his Instagram FXR, name, but his FXR four or yeah four the orange so one so clean so clean. I mean, so I saw him at uh, Judge show which I forgot about too uh, in uh, Fayetteville and uh, I was like you gonna sell that bike he will not sell it. So that happened and then also Rock City did their season opener where we walked out with some trophies anyway. big trophy guy over here. So now we're in April. Yeah. Uh, moving on to April. And for April, what do you have April? You said the handbell hand show was April for you. Handbell show was in April. And technically, I think the end of April was Fast Life. It kind of rolls into May, right? Uh, May, yeah, yeah. yeah. Close. Something close to that. Yeah, yeah. always good. Um, I think for April, for me, the only highlight, which is also a, a kind of a low thing, was I sold my chopper. Big chopper guy. Big chopper guy. That bike speaking has, of, that bike has Speaking some, of uh, Fast himself, Life, a yeah. uh, big chopper guy. Yeah. No, uh, he bought this random... It wasn't random. My uncle built that bike in the 80s, and I stumbled across it. He built the exact bike that you That were... bike was his, old bike. Painted, put together Not by painted. him. So he built it. My dad bought it from him. Then my dad sold it to another gentleman, which he tore down, painted it, it blue. gas or something stinks. And then the bike just sat for a number of years, and I ended up stumbling across it on um, Facebook, bought it. It was the same exact bike. I did a couple things to it, um, and as much things in my life, I... Bought it and impulse. It was a terrible buy. Yeah, it was a money pit. And it, but I made lots of money off of it, Sierra. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I made money on that deal. <laughs> yeah, thanks for covering me on that one. <laughs> but then we roll into May. May is officially the Fast Life Camp Out, which yeah. this year, Fast Life Camp Out. Uh, it's in early May, I think. It was in early May because I think we kicked off our trip on like May 5th or something like that. I think it was around like Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, it was late April, because Cinco de Mayo is when we, we were in Arizona by Cinco de Mayo. So, yes, end of April, you're right. Arizona. Oh, y'all's trip. Our trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you're right. Uh, end of April was Fast Life Camp Out. Yeah. Yep. I think he moved it up a little bit this year. Well, last uh, year. Up meaning, like, more into May. Well, last time he did that, he had it more into May. It interfered with Mother's Day. Y'all got those? I'm just like... <laughs> 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 I'm joking. Mom, if you're watching, <laughs> I love you. For me, in May... Uh, I also went to Texas Hills. That was actually fun. I rode down and then picked up Jetty, and then Jetty and I rode all the way down to Austin, and then uh, we stayed, or I stayed at Eddie's house. But the show was cool. That was my birthday weekend. I got f***ing the drunkest I've been in a long time. It was just me, Eddie, Jace, and Britta. No, and Kyron and Justin, I think. I got hammered at my own Thing, and then paid the tab at my own party, which is a, that's how drunk I was. 
was so stupid. And then the whole next day I was miserable. The following day was the last day of the show. And then I talked Kyron and Justin to putting, like we crammed my bike in their trailer. And thank God I did because we trailered home. And once I got home, like all my chain, the little rollers. Yeah. Like chain several of them was like, yeah, chain was shot. So I'm glad I didn't ride back. But um, for those that don't know, you can't get 40,000 miles out of a chain. Yeah, it's got to get changed every now and then. You lube it every 10,000 miles. First off, you gotta, <laughs> you got to lube it. Well, you, when's the last time you lubed a chain? Personally? Yes. You just buy not, them. Not, they come not, lubed in the package. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> 40,000 miles on, he didn't have 40,000 miles on it, but it's always funny when Justin's like, yeah, I put like 15,000 miles on it, and then I changed the chain. Yeah. That was my, one year, exactly, actually having the bike complete. My, my chain on the soft tail was the same way. By the time I got back from Daytona, it was missing a lot of the little O-rings and all that stuff. Mine and was the roller, the steel or roller. the rollers, yeah. A couple of like, rollers were broken yeah. off, so I had to buy a whole new chain. I thought it was in my primary because I was like feeling, I was like, dude, I don't want to drive this. And I was kind of being a little bitch because I didn't want to ride home either. Yeah. And then... I mean, it's a, I so Texas Hills, where is it? Is it New Brumfels? It, no, it's uh, it's like Hill Country of Austin, which is like southwest of Austin, I think. Yeah. So it's way out there. So from here, straight drive in a car, eight to nine hours. Yeah, it's a, it's an it's event, I guess it used to exist. And then, mm -hmm. oh, I can't remember. The dude that pits on, I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name either. But his, bike, bike, yeah, yeah. his bike is amazing. It's he, all, uh, I've seen it twice. It was, at, it was at the Fast Life Camp Out. That was the first time I've seen it in person. First time I met him. Yeah. Super cool, super cool dude. Um, and then the way he did like invitations to it was super cool. The invitations, the lead up, he did awesome promotion for it. He, he uh, stayed on top of it. He had... He didn't just do like one and done t-shirt design. He did like, I'm doing this shirt and he only sold like 50 of them. And I don't know, he just kind of, he promoted it real well. I thought it was, it was uh, good. really well done. I, I hated that I missed it. I don't remember what I had going on that weekend. I Memorial Day weekend's a tough one. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I had a, a something planned with the family. Yeah, uh, as far as Fast Life for me goes, you went down there. Was it you that was down with just, or uh, Jace when y'all did the joke about me coming up with an award for the, the bike show? So if you guys don't know, uh, Mark Big Trouble was hosting these bike shows. Um, I don't know if it's still going to be a thing or if it's kind of a thing of the past, but he was doing these bike shows where it was more or less um, the bike and the person, if you will. And they encouraged oh, yeah, a lot of other people to step up and give out their picks and their awards. So I had What was your pick. award? It was called the uh, Wheelos Evo Pick. Wasn't it like a cam cover? Yeah, it was a cam cover on a piece of wood and it had nice little placards and it had a, a brass... Um, uh, points cover this your bagger because basically if you're going to ride an evo across country your bagger you know. was my, was this last year that rose yeah. was out the year before yeah so you gave it the goal up on an fxr and i gave it to brian on an fxr that was actually fun that part is fun yeah I like uh, it, it does get drug out a little bit after that but that's part of it i think he's going to change it up kind of bring it back to the roots this year but i don't know so i will say i will say the giveaways is what got dragged out it got it, excessive but again, I get it because you know you get drunk and like fuck yeah, it. just yeah. let it all go. But I did make this huge rose bottle in this like frame thing, solid aluminum. It was twelve inches by twelve yeah. inches, probably like three hundred dollars worth of aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> the year before, I made this huge ass platform, and then it had a lot. no, had oh, no, a no. titty. Yeah. And then the nipple was a uh, ARP bolt, and then it, that was inside this miniature tent that I bought. You could buy tents for like dogs yeah. and shit, like little bitty ones. And that I thought that was funny. Yeah, Alex got that one that year. And then though, you, was it this year? No, last year at the hardcore show. Hardcore show, I made a. It was like a little over ten pound kickstand block. It was like this big, and. Brad got it, which is super awesome with his FX. If, if you don't know, Justin was known for, Justin's known for his kickstand blocks. Kind of like the the whole reason this everything here exists is from a fifty dollar kickstand block. So hilarious! Everybody no. makes fun of it, but then they buy one. I have one on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> but so I thought it was funny because everybody was talking shit about me making a, a kickstand block. So I made a huge kickstand block, and actually. I want it, like to yeah. have on the show, but Brad has it now. So usually Justin also with a hardcore show. Um, he gets reached out and makes some trophies or whatever. I know uh, I uh, John at heart. John, John whores me out for. for so trophies. Justin always comes up with like his own random <laughs> best of. So one year you did the best purple bike because that was like purple was like the thing that year. Yeah. And no one understood it. Like we all understood it, and everyone else he would text, but when we brought it to him and showed it to John, John's like, I don't get it. No, he like, got it. He got it. Everybody else didn't get it. Yeah, they're like, we're like, look around the show. There's yeah. literally 
20, there's more purple bikes than any other class. And I don't give a shit. As long as I'm laughing, I'm yeah. having a good time. So the group chat FXR tour from last year, still money. One day I'll get invited to that group chat. Mm, powder coat your frame. <laughs> <laughs> the only real FXR, I guess. Not a chopper. Hey. <laughs> I, mm, I'm, I'm still liking the stance. All right, where are we at? So we're still on the Fast Life Camp Out. So Fast Life Camp Out, uh, it was actually a really good time this year. The weather held up. The, uh, the only thing that kind of sucked this year is the cops were everywhere. So we didn't get to do none they of the racing, none of the stuff. on it. And they were like set up all outside of the camp out, which is weird because going into this year, we had it like the understanding of y'all can do what y'all want. Yeah. Yeah. A Adam opened up the campground and, and he's given us a little bit more rain, not us, you know, give Jace to let us kind of have a little bit more fun. And this year was supposed to be just like, just Why have at it. And uh, no, the, the city of whatever Moyers was not they, having it. And then state troopers, all that there. So I know a bunch of guys got pulled over. I don't know if any actual tickets were issued. I know Eli got pulled over and gave a, given a warning. And um, if you can pull some over, Eli's the one to pull over. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, he's not wrong there. So uh, that was kind of that part did kind of suck, but Steve still put on a little show, did some burnouts up on the stage, which again maybe didn't go so well with the rest of the staff there. Well, and then it was just misunderstanding. Yeah. It worked out in the long run. But the club style games. Was the first year of the club style games, which you guys saw in the video. Arkansas won that. Thanks again, Eli and RD and Eric. It was a shit show. That was the <laughs> whoever came up with the idea for the games, warm, chugging warm beer, eating, eating a can of beans, and uh, push ups. So I think in that order. No, the push ups were in the middle. Were they? Yeah, beer, push ups, then the beans. Oh, way, I've never seen so many people throw up in my life. It was horrible. It Great was horrible. Is what he meant to say. Um, that shit was funny. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys got to see that on this channel, obviously. Uh, a lot of footage from that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but then when we left the camp out, uh, my wife and I, when we left the camp out, uh, we headed west. And kind of my goal, once I did Florida this year, I was like, you know, what? how cool would it be if I touch California. I, I obviously didn't touch the Pacific Ocean. I think the first leg of the trip was like 700 something miles, went to Colorado, stayed the night. Our intentions, which this is what really sucked. When we do the camp out, he always gets the cabin. I always get either like an RV. One year we did get the little shitty shed cabins in the back. For the price of it, it's just way easier. It's easier if you get on the list. So I don't get the-, the um, It's called walk VIP. up to the- No, no, no. Walk I don't up get to the, the fucking office before the first camp out's over. So if you want the cabin, you walk up to the office. But you don't even know I the dates yet. Who gives you tell them that. You just reserve it for the entire year? No, you reserve it for ish. And then they would call, like, he changed the dates, they called me. Mm -hmm. So now you know. You gotta be adult about things. I'm waiting on the dates, and by the time the dates drop, He's all waiting until like, I don't know, April 27th, and he was like, maybe I should get a cabin. No, no. <laughs> Which actually the RV thing wasn't that bad. I did pick up a new bike. This year at the camp out, the Harley 1965 scooter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one in my living room. Yeah. yeah. The one you were doing. I've been the... racking them up lately. They go. We also forgot one of the biggest reasons we started this channel and what really kicked this whole year off was the FXR tour. I know we're going to get into the FXR tour. We're going to get into it. But really, the FXR tour was already set in motion. So by February, you guys already had the builders announced. Mm -hmm. the... Which is. Yeah, we'll yeah the it. bikes were, were kind of starting, you know what I mean, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, plans were being made, so that definitely like kind of kicked off the year and really motivated a lot of what we did and why we did the YouTube. Going back to our trip out west, uh, man, I can't explain. I've only been into like actually ride and ride and cross country for the past like three or four years. Justin's been into it a little bit longer than that. Um, and I know a lot of you guys have probably done it longer than that, maybe shorter than that. Either as far way, as the long distance riding, yeah. Yeah. Not that long. Motorcycles my whole life. Yeah, like, motorcycles my whole life too, but I've, I've never been ashamed to trailer. I, I never thought twice about it. Uh, I think Well, the mine was like traveling in general. Like it didn't happen. Really? Yeah. Oh, I traveled. Uh, I mean, I've been places, but just not. I haven't really until the motorcycle, oh, until like I was on my own or whatever. But uh, yeah, as far as, Motorcycle travels last five years or so. Because your first time to Born Free was 2018, 17? 18, I think. It's when the road glide was still black. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that. 
that had been five or six years ago. Yeah. So you've been you've been 18, doing yeah riding on. I've only been doing it since and 2020. I forgot about that trip. That was before I like I knew about the whole. There wasn't a performance yeah, thing. Eight hangers. Yeah, six Bro. by nines in the bags, stretched Bro, out bags. I was bumping. Twenty-one inch wired front wheel. Which I need another one. Anybody got one? <laughs> that, <laughs> hey, we'll get to that. For real. <laughs> that ain't no joke. So, uh, but for me, I've only flown to California one time, and it's as rich. far as as far as that goes, the on, the furthest west I've ever been is Colorado. So I've done surges a couple times and made it to Colorado and back. I've never done Arizona other than the airport. I've never done New Mexico, Utah, Nevada. I've never been to Vegas. None of that shit. So this trip was a big monument for me in my personal life. I was well. jealous of y'all's trip. Uh, it seemed fun. Only thing I would change is if I was doing it, I wouldn't plan on any of the camping. At all. That's what I was going to get to is so that the biggest thing that's it's not like a money thing. It's like a dragging all that shit on your yeah. bike, plus your clothes, plus everything else. Cause you can find cheap ass Airbnbs or the little yurts or whatever. Yeah, that one little trailer we found was super yeah. dope and it was like $40. You can do that here in Arkansas And too. a camp spot is usually like 40 bucks. So you didn't save no money. No. But the reason we did the, we, we were going to do the camping is my wife's an outdoorsy person. Growing up, my dad's not a hunter. He's not a fisher. He's none of that that stuff. We never camped growing up. My dad's a mechanic, gearhead. I've always Million been around cars. Here. Yeah, always been around cars. <laughs> <laughs> always been around cars and stuff. So never done outdoorsy stuff until I uh, met my wife and she's really into it. So we packed all that shit. We unloaded it on, on being on the road for, I think with the camp out and everything, like 14 days or 13 days, we unpacked it one time. But they drove it across country. The entire time, dumb. Totally dumb. You know how many UPS places they passed they could ship that shit back? <sighs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> should have just thrown it out. It was a $30. The, the <laughs> amount of It cost more to <laughs> ship it. Yeah. But so we, we did ride to uh, Colorado. The first leg of the trip was from the Moyers, Oklahoma, all the way to the Great Sand Dunes in Colorado. I think it was like 770 miles. Uh, that's the first spot we camped, or the only spot we camped. And it was like below freezing temperatures that night. But everything was closed by the time we got into town. So we set our tent up. We froze. And we just said, we're, we're done. But that's the first time I got to ride through snow. There was like still snow on the ground. Oh, really? Oh, it was beautiful. Um, all that stuff. I mean, you see it. We got the video out. And like I said, it's still early in our video career. So it's not the best quality. But the scenery. Um, yeah, I did a, a, the one road where it's like a, it's like a through the mountain is a tunnel. And there's like little cutout windows. Yeah, you that's can almost Zion. See the, that's fucking so big. I haven't seen that in real life. That's what I was going to say. I think one of the questions someone asks us is like, what's the best state to ride through? Utah, hands down. I mean. Bryce Canyon, Zion uh, Canyon, uh, or Zion, um, is it Canyon? No, I don't even know. I think it's just Zion. I think it's just Zion, National <laughs> Park. Yeah, it is just Zion. All that stuff, super beautiful, but when you pull out of, uh, so we went up from there, went to the Grand Junction, and then when we pull out of Grand, Grand Junction didn't really have much there. I was expecting more. Did Grand Junction, rode out of Grand Junction, and I'm thinking, like, we're just trying to get down to Bryce Canyon, and we, we ended up saying, well, let's not take the back way, so we're gonna go to the arches. We'll just take the highway, get there quicker. There ain't a road you can ride in Utah that isn't beautiful. That's the way I feel about Utah. Every, I mean, even the interstate, man, you're just like, the interstates are winding and through mountains. I'm a green, never rode in Utah. Never even been in Utah. Dude, we are so close. We almost went on, on our trip, yeah. but we didn't. You should have. Our trip was amazing, but yeah. So made it to all that sub, went and stayed in Vegas one night. That was the first time I was ever in Vegas. Uh, we went to, obviously, Fremont Street. We stayed at the Venetian. Um, just had a awesome time and then we left uh left there went down to needles uh, needles california so with that we can at least say we went into california which is only maybe 20 miles into california uh jumped on route 66 and then rode route 66 all the way back across so we went through williams arizona uh kingsman arizona went to the grand canyon i mean we did a lot of stuff and then when we got into page arizona page arizona was on cinco de mile that's why i know the fast life was in april because Cinco de Mayo, we're in Page, First Arizona. Weekend. Yeah, the last yeah. weekend of April. Oh, really? Yeah, it was, we were making our trip pretty quick. So okay. by the time we got to Page, it was Cinco de Mayo, we're Page, Arizona, which is where Horseshoe Bend's at, which is, inc that was an incredible experience. We were horseback road, first time I've ever been on a horse. Um, so did some horseback riding, but that's when I got really drunk and called Tommy at Cowboy Harley and said, or actually looked at my wife and just said, how crazy would it be if one of us came home with a new bike on this trip? And she's like, nah, I'm, I, neither one of us getting a new bike. And I'm like, no, 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 like, 
your, your Dyna is a little old and tired. Let's, let's upgrade it. She's like, I love my bike. I was like, what if I pay for it? She's like, yeah, I could maybe get a new bike, you know? So we called up Tommy that night and uh, by the next morning, Tommy already sent me over a deal that was way too good to pass up. So huge thanks on that. And by the time we, so we basically rerouted our trip to head to Austin, Texas. Uh, we still went through Mesa Verde. We still went through the Aztec ruins. We went through Roswell. We went through. Did you go, when you came, did you go down like Howie 10, like South Texas? We didn't go that far down. Oh, okay. No. So I want to do another trip where it's a little lower. Uh, it's through cool New Mexico. when you come through like uh, is it El Paso or whatever, like mm. when you're riding right there on the border of Mexico in Texas. And you can see Mexico over the, yeah. Dude, so that, weird. What's that, we like got, a Rio Grande or something there too? Whatever that, that yeah. shit is. And like you see like all these businesses and everything and then like all these people are just don't have it looking at it. it's, it's sad and crazy and weird at the same it's time mind boggling but it, it's so crazy yeah <laughs> so we did make it down to austin texas and uh big shout out to kevin down there he gave uh me and sierra a spot to stay oh by the way speaking of all this trip i think the most disappointing thing of the trip that i was actually kind of excited for was roswell <laughs> roswell there's nothing there but the the novelty of aliens the rest of the town uh, was a waste of time. I haven't been to there. It, don't go. You're wasting your time, the whatever. It was kind of dumb, but uh, we made it down to Austin. Tommy, thank you again so much for all the hospitality. Got us a great bike, great deal. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for giving us a beautiful place to stay and all that, and then we made our trip back through. I think we stopped in Dallas on the way home, did a podcast with Jace that will never be aired. Because, was it not? Nope, it got deleted. Oh, it was on just YouTube? Oh, you deleted it off YouTube? He did the live. And if you didn't see the live, said, <laughs> yeah, some things were said. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, that's what happened? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, was, there was some stuff, and Jace wasn't. Uh, I get it. Yeah. Sometimes, I get a little juiced up, too. Yeah, when, when you get a, a few, you know, Zemas in Probably yeah. the way this one's going, I'm going to be slurring time when you get already, done with this. I've had breakfast. You ain't had lunch? I made a sandwich before <laughs> I came here. It was great. So, uh, but anyways, we did a podcast with Jace and they made it home. And of course you guys see all that. So that was pretty much the wrap of our trip. The videos are on here. If you want to go back and look at them. By the way, she bought a brand new Lowrider ST, ST. the off-white one, which is gorgeous. She's officially got the nicest bike in the household. Probably the most reliable one too. Currently. No, my soft tail has been super reliable, but. You just sold it. I did just sell it. Uh, spoiler Anyways, alert. <laughs> so, so now we're at the end of May. I think there's some other stuff that's still nothing happening. Nothing else May. for me in May. Let me look. Why do I not just set this thing up where... Yep, that was it. That was it for May. So our next, or for me, I went to Born Free California, which I've been going the last few years. I can't miss it. Uh, so, so how many times have you been? Four. So, so and, and this, this is your first official time going in a truck. So 2023 is the first time you hauled a bike out there. What's I think I rode out I rode out there three times. Yeah. And then trucked it out this time. I'm going to truck it out every time. Here's the main reason, and that's what I was telling Jeremy messed me the other day. He was like, let's ride out there. I was like, especially for him, he's like, I'm in the middle of the country. He's on the East Coast. Yeah. It's on the West he's Coast. He's literally got to go the entire distance. His trip was extremely long. But um, so what was I talking why you tr why you prefer trucking over? So uh, yeah, oh yeah. So this year I took uh, I took the mint bagger and threw it in the back of the truck, just the bed of the truck. Drove out with uh, Jeremy, Ben Gurton, and Stone, and they came here, met me here, and then we all went out, and then we left from here. Um, the main reason we kind of went slow on the way out. I could have went further. I felt like, but. Um, so in the truck or the bike? The truck. Okay. I feel like it took a lot of time to get out there. Y'all the also truck. stopped at like we stopped at shit, like, shit. Yeah. And, and Stone's trailer was like disintegrating. It was made of so he has a in, nice enclosed trailer that was made out of uh, toilet paper. It was nice on the outside. <laughs> and like if you go forty six and a half miles an hour, it literally starts disintegrating. And so tires and Jeremy, bless his heart, he bought tires for that thing. Uh, and then the aluminum started coming off the sides. So we bought this carbon fiber duct tape. Not we, Jeremy, bought this carbon fiber duct tape. And like every stop, we just kept adding more duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> and then. <laughs> I wish y'all had a picture the, of the trailer. Like at the I end wanted of the, to start it in the finish. We should have did like a walk around yeah. if we had known it, like a walk around of the trailer. And then at the end, I think the trailer should be in the garbage by now, but. Uh, What's left of it? <laughs> and then the E-track was. 
put down with bubble gum and, and wishes. And so they had Ben's bike, which is decked out, very, very expensive. You had Jeremy had two bikes in there, his bagger and his softo, which is in here now. Uh, I think that's it, those three. I think that's it. So they're all strapped down the e-bike or the e-track and the e-track because once that bubble gum gets hot from <laughs> <laughs> from traveling, the bubble gum like releases and then the e-track just comes up and then the bikes just go fall. <laughs> yeah, it's funny now. Did y'all not try to use that carbon fiber duct tape to hold the e-track down? <laughs> It was too late. Oh, man. <laughs> it was too late. And I was like, man, because when we started that, I was like, it'd be nice to have my bike in the enclosed trailer. And then, like, halfway in the trip, I'm like, I'm so glad my bike's in the back of the truck. Man. It was great. The trip was funny, miserable, but fun. Uh, anyways, we drove out, and then uh, we all stayed at a hotel. Millhouse flew in and bought a go-kart for our um, a rental car. It was like, I don't think they make them <laughs> that small. But... And then we all stayed at this little hotel, which is probably 10, 15 minutes from Born Free show. I had a blast. It was a good time. The show was great. Um, while we were at the show, I actually got to meet Chris from Saddleman. Super nice. I got to meet all the new people uh, like that was kind of with the FXR tour. Mm -hmm. We had probably half of us there, just like coincidentally. It was Half of the who was on the FXR tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Jace showed up, didn't he? Jace was Jace, there, yeah. uh, Justin, Chris, um, Chris from Saddleman, Heath, Rini. Uh, Anyways, great time. It's always a good time there. Uh, the weather's always great. It's always hot in the bowl, but other than that, it's, it's pretty good. And then we always go. They have a bowl at California, too? Yeah, so it's, it's different, though. It's like in a little canyon thing. Mm -hmm. And I think five or six o'clock, like, Everybody has to be gone each day. So it's, there's different rules, but, and there's no cell phone service yeah. right there. Uh, I don't know. I love it there. I'm just the vibes there. And then when you go out to like, uh, like ride to Huntington Beach and go to eat and stuff. So you go from like hot to like 70 with no humidity. It's like fucking, you're freezing almost. Yeah. I love it. I, I can't wait to go back. The thing I wish I would have put more of on that video. So Justin, that was another one of the videos that Justin took the camera and kind of like recorded for you guys is they were around the pool at the hotel they were staying at. There's a lot that didn't get filmed of the shit talking. Just talking of, shit? Yeah. yeah. It was hilarious. We were just I drinking. Like it. it was super dark too, so it would be weird as a video. Yeah, so I'm learning now on these cameras, like you can turn up the ISO and all this other weird stuff and make to it To make it bright. bright? Yeah. So, uh, no, uh, like I was saying, there was a lot of fun stuff that you guys were doing around the... Uh, yeah, so like we'd go... We'd go to the show all day during the day, and then normally we'd go out to eat, um, and then hang out at the hotel and just drink shit. Shit. We actually all went through the drive-through. I think it was on the, the mm. video, and we had to walk through the drive-through. It's fine. Anyways. Because California is still they're still experiencing COVID out there. So no, it was the time of the day. They just shut down the dining yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It was a good time. And then the next night, there's this like fancy ass restaurant we go to in Huntington Beach, right there on the beach. And this is the second or third time, I think second time we went there. Now it's like a tradition, so every time we go to the, the show, we all meet up and go to this nice restaurant. It's amazing food, amazing spot, but it just kind of like ends everything and then the next day you go back home. But uh, it was a good time. Actually, we were there, um, what's the youngest Ness? Zach? Yeah, Zach. Corey, Max. yeah, Zach, Zach Max. is Corey's son. Max, the youngest one. So Zach has a son? Zach has a brother. A oh, brother, okay. I think it's Max, but Max was there and his buddy. It was so funny because Jason was like, it was so like, because they recognized him, whatever they talked. And he was like, because we always do like, you know this guy, you know? Yeah. And then Jason goes, you know this guy? And he's like, yeah, it's my machine. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was fun. You're known. People you gotta be you. there. People know who you are. Three. Anyways, so that was a good time. Born Free California was amazing. Even the ride back. But, but going back to what we were saying, you prefer trucking over oh, driving. Oh, sorry. Yes, trucking over driving. The main reason because of that is when you ride out somewhere, like you spend two or three days riding somewhere, and then the whole time you're there, this is me personally, the whole time you're there, you're dreading the ride back uh, because you have to like haul ass back and get back to work and all that. So the weather and everything has... I was about to say, they also say it's crazy hot because I've never ridden it, but you've yeah, done it. The it's desert, stupid it's hot. Uh, we lucked out the year prior but um so this year i was like i got to enjoy the whole time being in california because on the way home i'm in my truck 
air conditioner, have everything I need. So it was way more enjoyable for me. Uh, and then the riding when you're, in, when you're in California was great. So uh, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna do it that way from now on. And I also, have shit to prove to anybody. I don't yeah, care. And also, that's another thing. It's like everybody's got this like ego, well, not everybody. I feel, like, I feel like it's the newly acquired folks that have just started riding long distance that feel like they need to speak up about someone that wants a trailer or something. And the way I look at it is, just like with the FXR Tour, I know I got a lot of grief for driving the truck, but I literally just got done. I had nothing to do with shit. It was like, that was almost like work. Yeah, but I literally, within a month and a half, I went from Florida to California and back. You know what I mean? So I've already... You take that shit personally. I don't give a fuck. No, no, I don't take it personally. I'm just saying, like, it's just, it's crazy that people will make comments. And yeah. it's just like, uh, you, you just got to, you got to put yourself into the shoes of like, Justin already knew the FXR Tour was coming up. He knew he was going to be crushing a bunch of miles. He knew he already had a Sturgis trip coming up as well that he was going to be crushing a lot of miles. You don't have to crush miles on every single trip to enjoy it. Uh, yes, no. it's cool. But if, if you're the type of person that can only get out once a year or whatever, yeah, make the most of it. But if you know you got three or four trips lined up. Yeah, we have a, I have a f***ing list of all the trips. And if I rode to each one of those, it would have made those trips way longer and And the bike probably would have down. And <laughs> Probably. He would have to buy three chains at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and then like also like hauling shit and if the if the booth's involved and yes. I have the trailer. The vendor stuff goes back to that too. Yeah, and the shirts and blah blah blah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so also if you want to travel, travel with Jeremy because I'm the worst traveler. If I uh, go A to B and it says I can get there in twenty four hours, well I'm gonna try to make it in twenty three. Jeremy's like this is the world's biggest crater. Let's just pull over and look at it. <laughs> Which is great because I would have never seen half the shit I would have seen if it wasn't for Jeremy. Uh, we actually did see the big ass crater. Like, I'm sitting there like, I feel like it's like 1970 so, with the, the station wagon in the parking lot. I, you know how many times I got asked that from people that I work with where they're like, oh, you went out west? Did you go see the crater? I'm like, no, I didn't see I didn't know that thing. Now, apparently there's a big meteorite crater out there in the middle of the desert. Somewhere. And there's a car museum, like miniature one in a, gas station on off of highway 40 on the we went to that like twice i think really <laughs> yeah. i'll tell you the route 66 museum in kingsman is a joke i was really anticipating like a lot of hot rods and cool stuff because yeah. it's route 66 yeah they have a restaurant across the street it was super cool but we went to that, paid the money going to that little museum I'm like what in the hell it was oh that gas station's right over the border if you're coming east to west in new mexico they have everything possible that's when stone's tires were made out of bubble wrap mm -hmm. um <laughs> Those blue, right there, thank God. And then we pulled in there and got all new tires, museum, a sandwich, everything you possibly want was at this fucking that place. Oh, it's great. That's awesome. All right, we gotta move. So this back is gonna be, uh, like a, this this gonna be a long. Five hour thing. This isn't a podcast, by the way. This is supposed to be a recap slash Q and A. So hopefully you guys are still tuning in at this point. And I gotta stop putting. I'm gonna get rid of putting my password in. Did you have anything else in June? Nope. All right, so as far as me, real June, real quick, uh, June was Hot Springs did a rally every June, which they actually just announced that they were canceling it, so it's really? not happening this year, yep. I keep saying, I'm going to go, I'm going to Yeah, this year they actually said they're not going to do it anymore. At all? Yeah, and which is crazy because whoever wrote up the article said, you know, it really sucks for the economy in Hot Springs because it brings a lot of money for, you know, people. So who's getting rid of it? I don't know if the city voted on it or what, but it just said that this year is not going to be uh it's not happening again so we, we did kick off the year with that i don't think i recorded it but it was actually a really good time uh a neighbor a friend of mine just bought a motorcycle so we went down there with uh, him and his wife me and my wife ended up meeting up with a couple others it was a good time uh from that we went to if i could stop closing my phone out from that we went to who, who are you worried about getting into your phone it, no i have it on like a quick shut off hmm. my wife knows my code then why do you have a code? My daughter knows I have my code. Then why do you have a code? Because I don't need you to go with my phone. <laughs> I don't have it. You want my phone, just swipe it. After that, uh, I went to the Club Style Dixie, Georgia, uh, little meetup they had. So I went to Winter Robins they had at My Bar, which is just outside my parents' house. And is I, that the I, name of it? The bar is called My Bar. Like so, My Machine? Like it's My Bar, yep. <laughs> They're a big fan. <laughs> I just spit myself. So uh, I went down there, uh, was able to kind of uh, support that, have a good time. Again, I didn't record it. Uh, Craig actually rode all the way up from Florida for that too. So I got to hang out with Craig. This trip, not to get sad, but this is the one that dude left yeah. and had an accident yeah. and died. A gentleman named, his name was Chris. I don't know what his last name was, but super good dude. I guess he was the one who kind of started up the Club Style Georgia page. I was traveling somewhere when this happened. <sighs> yeah, you were somewhere. 
What time period is this? This would have been about mid mid June. Uh, oh yeah, you're on the, that free. trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're on that whole trip when it happened. Yeah. So unfortunately, yeah, uh, that was probably like for riding for the past four or five years. I would say that's the first person that I think we've lost in our group at these type of events. You know what I mean? And uh, it was very unfortunate. Um, he was on a new bike. I don't want to get into all the details, but yeah, don't it is what it is. Yeah. Um, he was a good dude. I was able to at least hang out with him that last night. So uh, after that. The next big thing to happen for me is on my way home from that, well, not on the way home from that, but maybe a couple days after that is my dream bike, my 1992 Harley Davidson Daytona arrived that I was going to never get rid of and so would still he, be in my garage. If he posts something, he's like, this is my forever bike. That means it's for sale the next two weeks. Yeah, forever. Just take the <laughs> ever part off and put the word sale. sale. It's the same to me. The, the definition of those two are the same words. So, uh, but that bike arrived in June, and you guys got to see that bike on the channel too. So, when did you get like sell it? September. Sold it in November. Six months almost. It's a long life <laughs> for my forever bike. But uh, that was pretty much my June, and then in July, uh, the only thing I had happened in July was, if you don't know the guys from Fast Life Camp Out or Fast Life Garage, uh, Jace and Franz and. Uh, Big Will Cody and Jacob and all those guys, they always do like a yearly trip together as kind of like a core group. And they came through Arkansas in July and we all hung out in Hot Springs. It was just me and Evan. Again, I didn't record it, uh, but it was a damn good time. That was probably one of my best times in Hot Springs because I think we just really let loose. They got a room at the Arlington. It's the first time I've ever been inside the Arlington there. Which so is, Arling, Ar Arlington sounds amazing. It's actually a shithole. It's hole. a shithole. Yeah. I you pay top dollar for garbage. shit. It was, it yeah. was garbage, but it had, it had you know, it, it was what it was. It's what the I boys, fell in, there's a, literally Hot Springs has hot springs on the side of the road. Yeah. Those, I fell into those motherfuckers. It's burning hot. Dude. It's fucking hot. Like yeah. you, when you put your hand in it, if you've never been to Hot Springs. Hand, fall into it. I ain't falling into it, but I put my hand in that little waterfall, whatever they got, and it's crazy. So. Uh, those guys came through town, and it was actually a really, really good time. I tried to encourage more guys from our local area to go, but unfortunately, their motorcycles. So the way that they got their lease set up on their motorcycles, so they can only put like a thousand miles a year on them. No, no, uh, the the uh, whole time they own it. The whole time. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I saw the contract. That makes even more sense. Yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe so like 30 miles a year is what they try to do. So hopefully they get their credit a little better, and they can actually own the bike no, instead no, of leasing no. it. Yeah, yeah. And maybe they can put some more miles on it. But Evan, shout out to Evan for showing up with me and not making Arkansas look completely horrible, even though this guy didn't show up. But it was a good time. I think you were somewhere. You had something going on. I don't know. Beard convention or? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like something was going on right then. There was, there was a reason you couldn't go, because I remember hitting you up about something. I'll go through text. Yeah, because it's literally 20 minutes. Well, yeah, Hot Springs like isn't far. From, oh, it is from a little further for me, but for him, 25 minutes or so. Yeah. Uh, but that was pretty much July and then August. August. As far as motorcycle trips, this was the best one I've ever had thus far. So that's the reason I'm getting so hyped about my New York trip this year is the trip that we took to Sturgis. But so Jeremy, Stone, Austin, Jetty, and me, but we all met up at Jetty's that, house. Was basically. that it? That was five. To be honest, a road trip, our bike trip, four people, perfect. Yeah. Four or six because of hotels. Jeremy and Stone came here, uh, stayed the night, and then we woke up and then rode to- oh, That's right, because I remember y'all making jokes because uh, No Show Ben, or whatever y'all yeah, call yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, no, it's Back Out Ben. Back Out Ben, uh, Back Out Ben. It's, he was supposed to It's go. permanent, that's his name. Yeah, yeah, he had high hopes and all kinds of shit, but had to rebuild a tennis shoe or something. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> so Back Out Ben didn't make it. So we left here, we went to Jetty's house, basically Dallas-ish, uh, and then Austin's from there as well. And then all five of us left there and went to, the first night was Santa Fe. So Y'all went all the way to Santa, Santa Fe on the first trip, trip the first, first leg? leg? Yeah, Okay. pretty positive. Yeah, yeah, because I was doing the ice bags, like the chopper dude with the ice bag yeah, on yeah. front, I was, it wasn't my idea. I saw the video with the chopper dude, put the ice bag on his like, I think I put that little clip of it, of it though. Yeah, motorcycle. And I was like, AC. that's fucking genius. So it was miserably hot. And so I was kept buying ice bags and putting right there in that, cause I had the open fairing on that bike. Worked great. Um, so we went to Santa, I'm almost positive we went to Santa Fe the first time. And we stayed at, yeah, cause we stayed at the hotel casino thing, which was super dope. 
I don't know all the, I can't remember all the details. But anyways, the fucking ride and the experience of that whole trip was great. We didn't, my thing was, we were trying to like plan each stop out, each day out. And then after the first day, we were like, F that. We'll go to the first day, stay there, wake up. And when we wake up, that's when we decide, come together, like what's the next town or city that we're gonna stay at? And then let's just worry about that. So we like went to Durango the next day, stayed there in the sickest hotel, right there on the little creek thing. That's where we went whitewater yeah. rapping, which was, yeah. It looked it great looked, on pictures. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll drop, drop a photo right here. Weird. That's fun. how intense it looked. And then I mean, it was fun, but. When, when we were in Durango, Durango uh, Justin was like, he made sure to point out, he goes, see that little white there? That's, that's where they took that photo of us at. And I was like, so it's like, it's almost like just cru cruising down the creek. And then you go to this like one little thing that was main made. Yeah. And then that's where they take all the well, pictures. Well, what was also cool on this trip, don't forget, is like you were able to make the connections with the sponsors of the FXR tour. So yeah. when you were in Amarillo, you did stop in at Amarillo Harley and then yep. Durango Harley. Yeah, and all so that. I forgot the camera. Yeah. We went and got the at Amarillo. We had the steak place, which whatever. And then yeah, Big Texan. Mm. So we went to the Big Texan. Then we went to uh, Amarillo Harley because they sponsored, they were part of the sponsor of the FXR tour. So I wanted to go there and kind of meet the guys, which he was actually out of town. When I pulled in there, but when I realized I was there, I forgot to left the camera at the Big Texan. I had to go back and get that. Then the big, uh, Amarillo Harley, nothing really happened because nobody was there. Then we went to Santa Fe, the casino, blah, blah, blah. And then after Santa Fe, we went to Durango. Is that the right order? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Order. yeah. Durango which Harley, which is super dope. The owner of it is amazing. Hotel was, we stayed, was amazing. The, the time we had, we went to this weird little uh, concert thing. We just fell upon. It was a good time. Everything was great. We had a great time there. That's, that's the reason I had to go back. It's where y'all discover that the Ace Hardware there has all the hardware. Bro, if, you, if you're in Durango, go to Ace Hardware in Durango. This is like Liberty Land. The mecca America. of all hardware. Of hardware. hardware Yeti, whatever you can fucking think of. The hardware is what blew me away because they literally had so much chrome hardware. Yeah. Like, you, you can get bolts with skulls on it from Ace Hardware. Their hardware section was the size of our my whole Ace Hardware. Yeah. Like, for real. It was insane. And then when it. we left there, we went to, is it Silverton, which is like 13, 14,000 feet elevation? Mm -hmm. Bro, your boy got some lung problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know those bullshit three dollar things is like oxygen with the mask i'm over just like <laughs> like how was jetty doing everybody was fine i was like you were the only one i'm over oh. there yeah i was like freaking out like i can breathe i was riding on the middle lanes because it's like the cliff i was a big pussy through that whole section but it was beautiful dude i would love to go back uh like for real it was so nice yeah because i'd be up here and then like jeremy would be like like he already passed and went down, and I looked down, and Jeremy would be like way down. It wasn't there. that deep. No, he was like that. Gnarly. Zion is like that. So Zion's got a bunch of switchbacks. Yeah, in. you got to ride Zion. You, you, you. Zion's like a, enclosed, right? Well, it's got that. It's fourteen. The national park is actually like fourteen or fifteen miles. Like I, I'm not. Don't quote me on it. But it once you come out of that big tunnel, that tunnel is like the world's longest tunnel. Yeah. Whatever. Once you come out of that, it zigzags. It's like hairpins all the way back down to the bottom. So when you're going, you can look down and see. Yeah. And it, dude, it is. That's how this was. It was super cool. All right. Sorry, the uh, batteries went dead. So I think we left off with uh, talking shit about Jetty. Oh, yeah. We went to this little town, the natural fed, swimming pool, all that shit. I wanted yeah. to stop. He was trying to go because he's go, 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 go. Yeah, we blew through there, all that. And then, anyways, the next town we stayed at was Bell, which I didn't even heard of this place because I'm poor. And this place is Fucking amazing. Have you ever been there or uh -huh. seen it or heard of it? Where's that? It's Nick like Colorado a ski Street? resort, yeah. I mean, oh, is that the one where you <clears throat> had the, the, the hotel, hotel where you open, open up the back door. door? Yeah, open up the back door in the hotel room and then you're over like the little creek. All the roads are like cobblestone. You, you just walk through this. It's like fucking thick. Yeah. It's weird. Um, it was amazing. The food was great. Everything was good. And then the next day we woke up we went, we were gonna go to one more stop, but then the weather started coming in. So we like beelined it to Sturgis. So like we rode all day to get to Sturgis. Because this Sturgis was a rainy one. Bro. It was super, super nasty, so. I'm gonna eat one more turtle. That's okay. I just had my first turtle, by the way. 
This is my favorite candy. It was actually really good. Might yeah, go sell another one. Actually, I'm gonna go take another turtle. So after Vail, we like went straight to Sturgis in the rain. Like it was raining while y'all arrived? Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, at the end of it, like, I never came in, I call it the backside of Sturgis that way. Mm. And the way we came in, it was like off and on, like gnarly rain, like bad. But I mean, it was still a good time. I'd do it again. Yeah, yeah I, was I was kind of bummed, bummed that I didn't go to Sturgis this year. My wife really wanted to go. Um, I don't know, like, with everything else that we did and had going on, obviously I worked a full time job. With everything going on, it's kind of hard to do it all. And I'll see uh, another thing, guys. Like, there's so many trips, and I'm already getting a lot of grief that we're not doing Daytona. But man, there's just so much going on. Every weekend has something. Like, once the riding season kicks off, I would say, like, the start of March till, I don't know, the whole year, actually. There's just something going on. For me, it's like, yeah, March to October. Something every weekend. Yeah, so it's, it's hard to keep up with it all, but. But yeah, like, during yeah, Sturges, yeah. it rained. Fucking lie, so much. I mean, we had a great time. We actually got an Airbnb like two blocks from Main Street downtown. That was, there's pros and cons about it because we could just walk to go out for the night, which was great. Uh, I had a blast. Uh, all our wives flew in uh, while we were there. So it was, it was a great time. Oh, actually, um, when we left Sturgis, we went back east and then we stopped at Dakota Digital, which was super dope. Justin from Dakota Digital like gave us the, Jeremy and Justin have been friends for a while. I, like, I just kind of got to know them a little bit more recently. Gave us a whole tour of Dakota Digital. They're actually building another facility next to them. Super sick. And then the next day after that, we went to the roaster shop, which I've been a super big fan yeah. of for years. And then uh, he gave us a whole tour, the owner of that gave us a whole tour of all the bills and everything. And then I, after, right after the tour from there, I beelined at home, uh, but Jeremy and Stone stayed there, and then Jeremy did a podcast with them with Oil and Whiskey, which is a it's great podcast. Really good podcast. Yeah. Uh, especially, I mean, don't matter if you're a car guy, motorcycle guy, it was a, it was a funny pod podcast. That was my search trip. Yeah. I think the only thing that we did in August, uh, August was the Mountain View show, which I did a little video for that. It's just a little little town. It's, a, it's actually the folk. Uh, folk music capital of the world, I think is what Mountain View is known for. So there's six people with folk music? There's 17 people there. And uh, we've come pulling up, and as you see in the video, the mayor of the town was in a pepper eating contest with some other locals, and it was, that was to be expected. And uh, I think 12 o'clock shop did some stunts. <laughs> yeah, I think 12 o'clock shop did a uh, little stunt show. Uh, those guys are really cool. And uh, they obviously support Justin. Uh, all their bikes have got some, some sort of My Machine is part on it, which is super rad to see. Yeah, that was pretty much our August. And then going into September. FXR tour. No, that's October. You're building in September still. What was September? For me, it was the Thunder Max. Uh, I missed that event. Sorry. So unfortunately, you missed it, but man, that was a good time. Uh, thank you again, Stephen from Club Style Illinois. Are or you seeing who works and then who doesn't? Who gets to enjoy the benefits? <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker could have went. There was a, a bed for him. There was a thing, and he was just like, you know what? Do you have a machine there that He's can like, my parts? Jake and Ryan. Eh, I don't know. Yeah, right. No, actually, uh, I love Jake and Ryan. He was busy because the, that. While I was at Thunder Max's, he was sending me photos of the FXR getting built because literally. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you were. You just uh, got the September paint done. September was like. You did the crunch. You went, you went time. out to uh, Jeremy's to do the paint, for yep. the frame, and everything on the FXR. So you were busy with that. I not so much building a bike. So I ended up going to Thunder Max, which was an incredible time. The weather was a little, it did rain a little bit on us, but my dad came up. That was awesome to see him come. Y'all all stayed in one house, right? Yeah. So it was uh, like Jeremy, not Jeremy, um, uh, Chris, Mr. Teabagger. There was a, uh, uh, how do you say his last name? Ziglo? Zig? Zimlo. Zimlo. Zimlo and his wife stayed with us. Steven, obviously, and his wife. Uh, who else stayed with us? Uh, Steve Chamberlain and Kyle both stayed with us, which funny story about Kyle. And because we're already at our whatever and no one's going <laughs> to listen to this, he had the top bunk above Chris, uh, Mr. Teabagger. And Chris was planning on leaving to go back to Michigan pretty early, but he left a little earlier than he wanted because apparently Kyle got a little too toasty from the old Music City Indian crew. And so he had two beers. He had three beers, <laughs> three beers. And he 
exited all three beers on top of <laughs> from the top bunk to the bottom bunk. You can That's use your imagination. That's the only reason I'm mad I missed it because I wanted to see that. Man, I've never seen Kyle drunk. And, and when Kyle's drunk, he is a loving dude. He, <laughs> he's like a huggy, like touchy-feely. Uh, there was a hot tub and he was like trying to just, I don't know, it was wild. But it was a good time. Uh, went to the Music City Hall of Fame with my wife the next morning when we woke up. Uh, but big shout out. Going back to Ryan and Jake, big shout out to those guys. They did a pre-party. Stop at saying Ryan. Nobody knows who that is. Millhouse. So Millhouse and Jake, uh, they did a, they set up a pre-party at, I think it was called Union City Trading Post or Union Trading Post or whatever it was. Man, that little spot was super cool. The ride there, as you guys see in the footage, was a really good ride. Um, I know Tony and, and Gino from here showed up. Really, really good time. I look forward to it again this year. If you have never made the chance to go out to Thunder Max, it's their actual facility. It's where they make the modules. It's where they make the iRide. It's where they, they do everything in-house, 100% in-house, other than the only thing they outsource is the when they do the air ride system, uh, JR, no, they make the chips in-house. They make all that stuff, everything. They got the printers for it. They got these like digital printers uh, and these little Koreans that weld it all together <laughs> but they make everything in house and uh, a couple years ago they were they gave me a tour of the place and it was super rad so that was a lot of fun but that was my what was that month august september august yeah august Se no september no september sorry and then going into october's fxr tour the i mean it's the only reason we live it's now the only reason we live uh for me the fxr tour so for all those that wanted to talk shit that i didn't ride a bike i had a lot of fun he takes with... it very personally with these comments. Who cares? I mean, who I cares? cares? No, it was work. Like, literally work the whole time. Like, we had to have a truck. We had to have a trailer, which got used all fucking time. Yeah, it actually got used more than we thought it was going to get used. Uh, we had to have merch. We had to have booth. We had to have all that shit. Uh, no, it was well worth it. Well worth it, even though my truck bought. And also, we had sacks. So that documentary is still dropping soon. We've had some kind of hiccups with the Saxon. With nah. Saxon. I, I mean, Saxon. But he, he's supposed all, to be ready this. So this is January. He's supposed to be ready before February, hopefully. He just sent me like a little clip the other day of of the video. It's so, so good. But, but also, we, we, we had two kind of dates and vendor spots, and they both are kind of one completely went through. The other one is delayed a little bit. So the main one that we want to do is in St. Louis, and uh, Frank was oh, one of the sponsors for the showing of the video. Yeah. So we want to do like a release. We want to do like a, a video party before we release It's probably going to boil down to probably just do something local if you want to come. If not, no big deal. And then uh, just post it on YouTube because... Yeah. It kept gotten, it kept getting delayed and everything like we'll that. We'll see what happens, man. But yeah. the video, I mean, Sax is busting his ass on it. And he's also, again, a full-time worker. So it ain't like he's just a full-time. So when he gets off work, he's trying to edit this thing. And it's nothing like our videos. The computer capacity was he's yeah. having issues with, too. But either way, uh, the FXR tour for me, even going from behind the seat and driving, we left Arkansas. You saw it in the video. Uh, literally working on Justin's bike till the day we left. I mean, we... <laughs> This is where we go. We leave Little Rock, go to Andy's. Uh, no, we go to Andy's to get your bike finalized while it's still in the trailer. Then we leave Andy's to go to. It was a fuel line or something we were fucking with at Andy's. Then we go to Jetty's house. Then we go out to eat. We get drunk. So Jetty, first off, Jetty's house is like five to six hours for us. So we didn't leave our, We didn't leave here until almost two o'clock. We got to Jetty's. It was like someone started seven to eight o'clock. Yeah, it was like seven o'clock. Yeah, because we go straight to dinner. Right? Which was, thanks, Jetty. That was an amazing dinner. That was actually, so good. it's a badass little steak place that had like a dude playing acoustic guitar. and Yeah. I forgot my cowboy hat, but it was a good time. Yeah, I didn't have my boots on. But the food was amazing, and Jetty was serving us a bunch of drinks the entire time. And we didn't leave there until almost midnight. Then we get back to Jetty's house. They were supposed to go to bed, wake up the next day, and then Hit start the a trip. Somebody made this comment like, fuck it. Let's the leave big truck driving guy, Jetty, said, Was it him? I think he was the initial one. He was like, why don't we just drive now? And he, he volunteered to drive. How much driving did he do? Fuck, we left his house at 1.30? It's like 1.30. Really? Yeah, 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Because we sat around there and drank more. We left the bar. We were supposed to go. We were supposed to leave. So we never stopped anywhere until Durango. No. We were supposed to leave. No wonder I was so... Such when, a we left, when we left, when we left, 
we, we showed, showed up to Jetty's. Jetty's. We were supposed to, he was supposed to take us to a quick dinner. dinner. We were supposed to get back. We, we should have been back by like 10 o'clock. The original plan was to get in back in bed, to wake up at like 3. Yeah, exactly. And, and then hit the road at 3 or 4. We didn't leave that restaurant until 12, maybe 12.30. We got back to Jetty's and he was giving us more beer. So we're drinking. Not all of us. The, the initial driver, Saxon, didn't really drink at all. So me, you, and Jetty were just drinking more and more and more. Saxon started the drive, didn't he? Yeah. So, so it was about 1.30, and we're like, man, we go to sleep right now. We're not waking up at 3. And we, needed, we wanted to be in Durango by 3 o'clock. It was like 12 hours from Jetty's. No, it was 13 hours, but we gained an hour with the time yeah. difference. It was like 13 hours from Jetty's house to Durango. Me and Justin have already been up since 6 o'clock the, the day prior, which was on Saturday. Yeah. This, this, was, this was going into Sunday morning. So Sunday morning, it's 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning, and Jetty's like, let's just leave now. He's like... You know, Sax said he's good. Uh, once Sax is tired, I'll drive. Jetty, I'll drive, and then you know we'll we'll figure it out. Okay, he's in the front seat the whole fucking time. So, <laughs> Sax gets in there, and we're all trying to draw, you know, get some sleep, or whatever. I'm in the back seat of my own truck. I can't sleep in a car. Period. I don't care what it takes. And I I'll be honest, the back seat, even for someone as short as me, wasn't the most comfortable. So I can only imagine how it was. For him. Miserable, fucking miserable. But we end up making it through Amarillo th into. I think we were pretty good ways into New Mexico. Right May before the sun came up is where I took over. No, I drove for a little bit. Not in the sun. No, I was still, it was still nighttime. Yeah. So I was the driver. So Saks finally shut down at like, I don't know, 5 o'clock in the morning or whatever. Less. No, he did about. What? And then I because I only drove one gas tank. I only Which drove one gas tank. a couple hours. I bet, I bet you Saks drove to a three. You drove probably to a five. And then I drove all the way. Well, either way, thanks, Jetty, for not driving. And we made it Durango. We showed Durango. Uh, Rennie was already there. So Rennie was the first one there with his. Was he? Yeah. Oh, his, yeah, because yeah. the JV Weld had a dry while he was there. <laughs> so he was there with his FXR Tour Ram 1500. And, <laughs> and uh, they were all posted up already. So uh, we get Justin's bike unloaded. Actually, I was on, like, once I got there. Yeah, we, we all sparked up. up. Because, because we, went to Ace, we went to Ace Hardware before we showed up in the parking lot. And I'm on a high at that point. Did we, we not stay anywhere? Do what? We not sleep anywhere, though? No. From, 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 from Jetty's to from Durango. Durango. We from sleep. here. No, from here to, to, to Durango, we didn't sleep. Until we got Durango. I mean, whatever, whatever we got in the truck. Nothing. Nothing. Speaking of crazy, what was that gas station we ate at between... Remember, Remember when we took, took that one highway, highway when you come out of New Mexico into to Colorado, Colorado, that was garbage food. Remember, Remember it was like a Mexican restaurant, restaurant was like the worst Mexican. The, the, all of the coolers that had all the Cokes in it, we could get a Coke. Like, this one's not cold. He goes, yeah, the coolers don't work. Why the f*** are you selling these Cokes? Fucking gross. It was garbage. I don't know. I remember where we were, but. I don't remember what town that was, but we made sure that the ride out of Durango did not go down that road. shit the whole time. Yeah, anyways. Luckily, we didn't record it for y'all. It was horrible. But in, once I got to Durango, that's when like I was on a high because like everybody's rolling in with their bills. I get to see all the bills like in person. So much fun. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I think the, the next the next, next ones, ones to show up were uh, Paul and them, Mikey and all those guys. They were super super cool to hang out with. And then I think uh, who made it next? Because FXR and all those guys didn't make it till the next day. So who else partied with us that night? Clem came in super late. Clem. He came in late that night, the what? first night. But he was there the first night. He was night. there the first night. Yeah. And then, because we all ended up going downtown. And I don't think we, we recorded a little bit. You guys saw it. Like, we were playing foosball. and we had, I had a blast. It was awesome. Like, downtown Durango was. We, you ever we, seen 16 and a half dudes in a fucking Corolla? It was a girl. So, they had, apparently it's like an off season for Durango. And they had one Uber for, like, the entire town. And mm -hmm. this guy, we told him, he was like, hey, we're not going to ask for another one. We're just going to pay you direct. Will you just. Turn down whatever ride you get and go right back and pick the rest of our guys up and keep bringing, like, just bring carloads of us back to. It was so much fun. And then he gave us his number so we can just call him directly and just hand him cash. The, but the, like, the whole town shut down early. That's where we kept trying to, like, yeah. find each uh, bar. But yeah. it was a good time. We had a blast. And then uh, the next day, um, more guys rolled in. And that was the first official day of the FXR tour. Yeah, so um, literally the rest of everybody came in. Yeah, everyone else came in. Uh, you saw it. We were at the dealership. We went, actually, some of us went downtown. I think Jason and those guys went downtown. The rest of us had to go back to the, the shop. Unfortunately, Ashley's bike had some issues, and we were working through it through that night, trying to get that bike ready to be on the tour for the entire length. It didn't work out. No, like everybody came together. Yeah. Justin. 
Hopkins, Mikey, Mikey, Mikey that, yeah. everybody, yeah, like we're trying to get his bike right for the morning. Um, kept having issues. Comes down to it, it was the twist grip. Sensor, sensor was bad. bad. The sensor was bad. Yeah. yeah. So, but he brought two FXR, so he did ride this other FXR the whole time. Still rode FXR. He was bringing the other one for his son, which lives actually overseas, um, to ride along with him, which sucks he didn't get to do that. I'm sad about and that. And I also want to say real quick, Ashley probably shares our videos on YouTube more than I share them. He loves... Ashley and the crew behind Ashley has been oh, the yeah. best Dave part. Dave and those guys, yeah. man. The best. They were so stoked about being there, which I could imagine. Could you imagine flying halfway across the yeah, world? He, so, so he's from, from Britain, Britain, Great Britain, yeah. whatever, England. I don't, I don't know, know what the difference is. Great Britain, Britain UK, England. it's all, UK, I don't it's know. All, isn't it the same? I don't know. There's so many names for this. But yeah, they all came over. His dad was here, his yeah. son. So he had three generations of yeah, they, Ashley. Yeah, they rented a couple of road glides. They were... Brits on tour. Brits on tour. Or Brits aboard. No, it was Brits on tour. It was Brits on tour is what we thought they were saying. They were actually saying Brits aboard. Oh. Or something like that. Yeah, get your English better. <laughs> Speak up. <laughs> Speak up when you're being talked to. So, but those dudes love them, man. They're all like jujitsu. They probably all kick all of our asses. Like they look oh, the old. Oh, one dude that was like, I kept fucking around. I was like, dude, start smiling. And he's like some world champion Yeah, like jiu-jitsu. three degree black belt, whatever. <laughs> Those dudes really like made the trip, but either way, was Durango was cool. Going on to the FXR tour, real quick. We planned two routes. I know we, uh, if anyone's watching this that was at Amarillo and I wanted to see all the bikes and maybe the bikes didn't get there and you left a little early or whatever. We planned two routes. One route would have got us into Durango or to Amarillo quicker. One route was gonna help Rennie out with his gas stops. Had we known <laughs> Rennie didn't, didn't need gas stops, we would have known his Dodge gets great gas miles off of the tank. tank. We, we would have just went the faster route and we would have made it to Amarillo on time. But unfortunately, we went the other route because we thought Randy was going to ride the tour. A motorcycle had a motorcycle yeah. event with the motorcycle build that he was yeah. motorcycle Yeah. Build. I mean, I don't know what the FXR tour was about. I mean, I thought I heard the rules at the start of it and there was a, a ride that was going to happen, but Wes a little hard. He built a shovel head with a seat this thick and Mid controls above, above the shoulders, shoulders and everything else going on. Poor, and poor little guy. Anyways, beautiful bike. I I mean, it, was, it was the second bike he ever rode, so I'll give him that. It, it does, does look good on a trailer. trailer. Uh, a little bit even better on the road, though. But we did go to Amarillo. Thank you for the support yeah. for that. That was Trip amazing. And they had food. They had a whole, like, I didn't realize that place was that big. The first time I went there, it was like a whole back section with all the food. That's what I'm saying. I feel bad we didn't make it there earlier because they literally put it up for us. They had a, a radio station on site. They, they had a big turnout, though. It was, it was still, still a big turnout, turnout, but I got there about 30 minutes before you did, and bikes were leaving. There were oh, really? more bikes there when we got in. It seemed big when I got there. But they had food and everything for us. And Amarillo was also where uh, we went to that little bar. I don't remember what the name of that bar was, but where uh, Heath got the knife yeah. presented from. What was his name? John? I'm so, uh, goes back or to the bad with the names. names. Yeah. This guy lives there with the bike shop. I know Joe Kidd is good for Beautiful him. Beautiful FXR, that one he pulled And his on. buddy that was working with him just passed away like a week prior to that. At the, the run, run the tail lingua that, that Jace was at yes. prior to it. Uh, unfortunately, I hit by either a drunk driver or just a driver in general. Something, I don't know. Something tragic, it was. But anyways, uh, that guy had a custom knife made and he was gonna give it out to the bike that he liked out of the 10, which he gave it to Heath, which is Amazing bike. Very Everybody deserving. That bike was incredible. Um, so that was that night in Amarillo at that bar. And then we left there, went back to the hotel, which is a top-notch hotel. Uh, from, oh, leaving the next day from El Amarillo, going to Strokers, was like being in a tornado for fucking yeah, once, 10 hours. Once, so I don't know how, I don't know what all the highway numbers are, but when you're coming out of Amarillo, there's a, there's a turn you take, and then that road will take you pretty much all the way to Dallas, Straight like to 280, Dallas. whatever. The craziest wind. The crosswind was insane. I am a weirdo. I will not give up. I'll make myself miserable no matter what. But I was literally riding like sideways. It was gnarly. Yeah. The uh, unfortunately, Jace called it quits early. His bike kept had some electrical issues, issues, and then the wind, wind was, was, was killing, killing him too. too. And, and his, his bike already had a little wobble too. That he was complaining about. Yeah. Uh, and then Ashley, he did have to put it in the back of the trailer with us for about. I would say about 40 miles or so. Once, once, once I could feel the truck wasn't blown around as much, he yeah. was willing to ride again. But his bike, you know, he has a, 
a high mounted fairing on. He was riding his orange FXR. Oh, he had a fairing. It was, it was that, that little nest fairing, though. I had a fairing. <laughs> was it? It probably did more damage than good. Yeah. Then. So, but and also, I never thought of it. He kept saying the whole time. He's like, literally, the first day we did 500 miles, and he could ride from one end of his country to the other end of the country less than 500 miles. So. And he was saying that y'all do, or us in America, we're doing it pin the entire time. Yeah. They go through so many cities that you might have a stretch of like 10 miles where you can open it up to. No, we're blasting. We're blasting yeah. the entire 500 miles at 80 to 120, like in that range. Whereas they're, they might hit 100 for, I don't know, two miles, and then they have to slow back down to go to some cities. I will say like, I was wanting a fairing the whole time. I had no fairing at all. I, like, a lot of Mexican blanket, blanket that uses a fairing. I didn't ra- I put never it put it on, it on the bike. No, I still have a blanket though. But I like, I rode beside Corey a lot and he had the SD fairing on his and he's cruise control at a hundred miles an hour just Sip enjoying his latte, life. And I'm like fucking hanging on. It was, it was a good time. I wouldn't trade anything at all, but like, uh, yeah, fairings work. Yeah, windshields, windshields work. work. I literally, literally just bought a windshield for my FXR for that sole purpose of like, if nothing else, I at least need something to just kind of knock some of the wind off of me. So, uh, but yeah, from Amarillo, we left Amarillo. Um, Through the wind, two strokers. Wind, yep, strokers. Um, wind was gnarly. Before strokers, did we do anything before strokers? No. So Rachel flew in, I picked her up. Oh, Dallas. Strokers. So then she was with us for the rest of the trip. And then uh, we showed up at strokers. She's rich. She's got a lot of money. She flies everywhere. First class. That's what I heard. <laughs> so, uh, you yeah, know, we made it to Strokers. They set up the center of the aisle, as you saw in the video. They sent the center up with uh, all the FXR builders, and then uh, they let us set up our little booth, sold some T-shirts, met a bunch of you guys. Uh, really, really good turnout. I, I, I was really stoked on that. I mean, I've been to Strokers a few times now. That was actually the first time for me. Really? Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I didn't get to go other than, yeah. Yeah. I want to. I want to go back and like. Ex- yeah, he's got a cool museum with, with all his bike builds and other bikes, bikes and stuff in it. So if you've never been to Strokers in Dallas uh, and you're a motorcycle guy, if you ever go through Dallas, definitely go through there. Food's great. Ninety-nine percent of the time, you're going to run into. Um, I can't believe I just forgot his name. Who? The owner of it. Oh. Uh, well, I'm an idiot. So uh, we'll scratch that out of there. But either way, uh, the owner. Uh, Rick, Rick, uh, Rick Fairless, Fairless, yeah. So Rick, uh, he's usually there behind the bar 99% of the time, and every time I've been there, he's been there. Uh, he'll talk to you. He, he enjoys talking motorcycles, so definitely make it through there if you're ever through Dallas. So I had an issue with uh, the hotels, a few hour issue. Anyway, so I had to beeline it back to the hotel. I had to leave early to go do that, and then we stayed just right outside of Waxahachie. Well, we we're close so to the TP. TPJ was riding uh, FXR Division's Pan American. Was he riding at this time? Physically riding. It's the first time I actually seen him ride a motorcycle. But he rode, so I followed him, and he's this, he's super fast. Um, so we're doing like <laughs> 66 and a half miles an hour the whole way, open freeway. Um, so it took us way longer than it should have to get there. But uh, we finally made it after I had to take the lead, I think, at the end. Uh, but we got to the hotel. And that was actually fun, hanging outside the hotel, just shooting the shit. Uh, but the next day, I had a blast at Jason's shop where we the all... The hotel was fun. That night at the hotel, hotel was, you remember me and Rachel, we, we went, went and got, got a bunch of in and out burgers. Yeah. Brought a bunch, bunch of burgers back, back for everyone. And, yeah. and uh, all the Saddleman guys, every stop we had, I don't know how their cooler never emptied, but their cooler always had beer in it. They, they, they do not separate either. They, they don't separate. separate. They love each other. <laughs> I think they, they slept, slept in the same, same bed. They all got like a single queen size bed, and there's just all, all of them in there. So, uh, but, but no. The next day we woke up, we went to uh, Jason's shop, which is in Waxahachie, and then we hung out there all day doing all the interviews, which you'll see when the whole documentary thing comes out. Uh, I had a and some, some washing. Y'all wash, got, got bikes washed, washed which we I washed mine. Yeah, yeah. You got, uh, Frankie had to wash his. Frankie Garcia rode with this. He had to keep his bike on top. But he's wearing a hoodie. I'm sweating my nuts off, and he's wearing a hoodie the whole time. With the cowboy hat and all this other stuff, and not a drip. I don't get it. Tell not me the secret. a. Anyways, so that day was great. When we left there is when like the ride we did straight to Born Free show, yep. right? Which was good. And then, Which, that's when we try to film more like through the old school. But that's also when everybody was together. I got that clip of like time. 80 FXRs going by me yeah. at one time, and it was. Amazing. Amazing. That was so cool to see. There's a lot of, uh, 
tension and nerves and all that shit because everything didn't work perfectly, but we're working it out. So it was great. That time was great. Uh, seeing all the bikes together. When we like stopped downtown uh, Waxhatchee, you weren't there. Like no. we all pulled over. Like Joe Kidd and his crew was with us. We had a fucking stack of them and it was so much fun. Uh, and you'll see a clip in the video where like we all ride through downtown. It's, it's fucking awesome. But um, then again, we kind of broke up which, dude, Big Chris from XS Art Division and all them, and Paul from Bare Knuckle Performance, blasting from after we did the filming to the show. So yeah, much. You fun. guys took off from so the much main fun. group, and then we passed a smaller group. I noticed you guys weren't with them. Oh, we so we get that little town right before the show. We pull in to the gas station. There's probably ten of us at that point, mm. and then. Cop pulls in behind us. I was like, fuck. And then Paul's like, fuck. I was like, dude, I don't have, I was like, all my paperwork and shit's in the truck. I don't have shit on me. And I'm like 30 minutes further than you guys. And I was like, fuck. The dude gets out and he goes, this FXR tour? I was like, no fucking way. It was amazing. And then he was like super cool and then let us like do whatever the fuck we wanted to. So it was great. Um, Then we went to the show. Show was great. I don't know too much detail about all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Watch a video. I mean, it's it's born free in Texas. It's definitely a different vibe from what I've heard. I've never been to the California one, but hopefully this year, I'm eighty percent sure that I'm gonna ride out there with, or not. I'm gonna be in the truck with Justin when we go out there to uh, California, and um, I'm gonna get, experience the California version and, and compare it to the Texas version. But it's you can't compare it because they're two different. They're two different shows, but, but you can also. You, it's not you can compare it, but you can see which one you like more. And from what everyone says, that have been to both, the vibe in Texas is way better. Um, it's a little more open. It's a little more carefree. It's a little more... Um, it's different. It's just different. I don't compare them. I yeah. don't say one's better than another. They're just totally different. For me, the FXR tour was incredible, and so incredible that I bought an FXR. So when I got back from the FXR tour, uh, I had a brand new, fresh off the showroom floor, 1991, <laughs> FXRS sitting there waiting on me. Thanks again, Taylor and Grant for going to pick that up for me. Uh, and that bike, I've always admired FXRs from afar, if you will. Um, I've never been a, um, I don't know, man. I've, I've been an old school soft tail guy for so many years. I've had a bunch of Springers and I've had a Cholo Deluxe and some Heritages and stuff like that. Uh, this soft tail lowrider S that I have now, the, the newer M8 soft tails is like the first step into like kind of the performance realm, if you will. Uh, but I've always loved the FXRs. I've always respected them. And this specific one that I bought was kind of my dream FXR if I was to ever buy one because uh, I actually modeled my 2020 Lowrider S after this bike. Uh, probably two years ago, I painted it the two-tone blue using more of a modern color, but the factory decal. And I always told myself, if I ever got an FXR, you know, this is the one I would get. And I found it, bought it. And when I got back from the FXR tour, it was in my garage waiting on me. So the FXR tour, not only did it kind of for me, introduced me to a lot more of the FXR community. It really showed me why the FXR community to me is probably better than most other communities because I don't think a single guy talks shit on each other. I think they were all willing to help. It showed when Ashley's bike broke down. It showed when, uh, who else had, anyone else have any mishaps? I guess, you know, Jace and a couple other guys, but anytime something happened on the road, everybody was there quick to, you know, work with them and, and help them out. And I think we should get to the questions before we yeah, get to Yeah, because we're running out of time, and I, the, the wrap up the rest of the year, oh, uh, sorry. November, sold to Daytona. Thanks, Jeff at NAMS. He has two of my bikes in his personal collection now. Uh, I started tearing down the um, FXR that I just bought. I put about 100 miles on it, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go full overhaul on this bike. So started stripping it down in November, and then December, Justin and I did the toy run, which is just a local event. I'm sure they host them all over the country. But uh, we went and did that, and it was a lot of fun. I enjoy it every year. It, it, it makes me feel good to kind of do a little something for the community and those that are a little less fortunate. So going back to questions, let's start answering some questions. I know one of the questions that I really like the most, and it comes from, um, so Coley Landon, I think I said his name, Coley, Coley, C-O-L-E-Y. Uh, he had two questions, and the first part question was, uh, other than the F, other than the other FXR tour bikes, what are some FXRs that influence your builds or that you currently are into and why? And this could go back to your first FXR build, you know, a few years ago. This could go bikes that you've admired since you've been in the Harley industry. I'm, I'm kind of adding on to his question, but what are some FXRs that you've kind of looked at? Like what, what got you wanting an FXR? 
and what got you wanting to stick with the FXR platform um, as far as bikes? Like what, what have you seen that's kind of sparked your interest in this? I don't know what physically got me into the whole FXR thing, which is and the more I think about it, like I really don't remember that like trigger, but when I was building the first one, I've only owned three or yeah. four, so it's not a lot. Um, but the first one I like built, built, uh, I just wanted the whole club style T, mm -hmm. you know, T bars, tall fairing or tall shield, all that shit. Which this is 2020, so you know, we're yeah. talking four years ago. Yeah, so I can't remember what, like, what really triggered me to do the FXR. Um, but I didn't get to keep that bike very long. I don't think I've had a year. It. No, you had a year because you, you started building it and then you sold it in April, May. Of yeah, May and gave it to my lawyer. Um, but yeah, so I love that bike. It was actually Evo. It was very simple-ish. I mean, everything was, it was inverted front end, swing arm, all that shit. A lot shit. of cool billet pieces, but the bike overall, I don't think nothing really stood out like this FXR. And I think the main, I did everything black and then the paint job. Jace actually painted that one. It was uh, gray and purple. Uh, I love the bike. And Joe Kidd bought, actually ended up buying it for me. So, what was the other question? The question was, uh, what other, like, what FXRs, are there, are there any current FXRs in today's lineup that you look at that either you inspired from or that I you put, just have some? I put FXR Division on a big pedestal, especially with the one they brought for the tour, but even, like, the bikes they've done in the past, like, they're just well done. Yeah. They're just well done. So, and somebody asked me that while we were on this last tour, like, what Without about, choosing yours, which bike would you choose? And it would have been their bike. What about, uh, what's the purple, what's that one called? The one that you admire from SCC? What's that name of that bike? The white and purple one? Uh, African Twin. African Twin. I love that bike. Yeah. Like, I know that's one of your favorites. <laughs> it's, it is my favorite. Yeah. That is my favorite bike. So, for me... Obviously, I've always been kind of like an OEM guy. I, I like OEM paint and OEM this and OEM that. So I don't think there's really any particular bike that inspired my purple bike. Purple African, not African Purple African, that's yeah. what, I knew it had purple in the name. African Twin's actually a Honda. Yeah, a Honda is yeah. their bike. Um, but for me, I don't think there's been any particular bike. I know um, Andy here local has always been an FXR guy. and He's always promoted them and talked about how great they were. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah you don't know what you're talking about. But I think that's who like really pushed, pushed me you. yeah, to the bike. Um, because they kept telling him and TC and all them, and they tell me how great they are. So that's what really pushed yeah. me through it. For me, it just was uh, you more more than anything. Because you know, I helped you a little bit putting that the one together. You know, in 2020, and we rode that bike. I uh, rode beside you all the way to Sturgis on that bike, and had a lot of fun. That was like my dramatic first. Dramatic for Scott. Super dramatic. My carburetor was... bracket broke twice, and he just twice. Three times total, but you weren't with us on the third. Uh, mm -hmm. It broke a lot. Like when the bracket itself broke, but the zip ties and the fixes and all that stuff broke a bunch. But the people we got to meet along the way, it because was awesome. of the bracket. It was awesome. And that was my first big trip. So I was already very stressed. Stressed because uh, I got my wife <laughs> riding beside me. She's we never... would go like 100 miles. Like, we should just get a hotel here. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a good town, right? We're like, like we're, no, just we gotta, we're just we outside of Little Rock. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's going to turn into a freaking 10 days to get there. We left Little Rock and, and stayed in, in Kansas City, which is not far. But we left Little Rock at like 6 at night. Yeah. We left... We left Little Rock. A day early, right, or some shit? Yeah, because, so it was, we were supposed to leave Friday morning. We had another gentleman by the name of Adam, which is the guy that used to dye his beard. Uh, <laughs> so we had him with us, the, his barber, and uh, my wife, and it was the four of us, and the plan was to leave Friday morning. And I remember Thursday, I'm already off work, and I'm texting Justin, I'm like, my feet are antsy, I want to leave now. My wife's off work, and... Um, so we messaged Adam, and Adam was the only one that held us up. And he's like, well, man, I, got, I still got some appointments. I can't get done until like 5 o'clock. Yeah. I was like, well, be done at 5 and let's go. So we ended up hitting the road. I think it was like 6 o'clock in the evening. Because when we got to Kansas City, it was like but midnight. But it was pouring rain, one. remember? We had to put our rain gear on before we even hit 49 going to Northwest Arkansas. Remember on I-40? Yeah. We had to put our rain gear on. We got fucking... Before we get to Fayetteville. Yes, uh, super like drenched with rain. And we made it to Kansas City, but... Before we made it to Kansas City, the carburetor bracket broke the first time. So he had the thin little sheet metal um, kind of 
U mount or whatever you want to call it that held it the air. It sandwiches cleaner. the Makuni carburetor to the intake. So if that breaks, the carburetor just yeah. falls off. His was off. a bottom breather motor, so it, it wasn't breathing through the top, but it still bolted to the heads. So it kept breaking there, and uh, we had to do our first road pair, roadside repair, which I'm going to drop a photo up here that shows the photo of the repair. I would um, ride, I would hold the carburetor with my with, knee and just ride the whole way. So the carburetor falls off, <laughs> it literally falls off, bike shuts off, we kind of make a fix. Um, and then we, it happened again, we, we safety wired it, it happened again. So we ended up saying, let's just get a room here. It was like two in the morning, I think at this point. Yeah. Uh, made, got a room, he, he sourced a, another bracket at a shop local. We did find a local yeah. shop, went to the shop, he had the one. The same bracket. Same What's weird one. is his mom, he still owns his mom's house, which is like five minutes from my house where I grew up back in Little Rock, which was super weird. I'll never forget that. Um, but yeah, so like he had the bracket then like the coincidence of uh, like the location of where we grew up. And then also, you remember that dirt bike? You never went to the shop, did you? I didn't go to the shop. Was, remember my, I lost my medicine. That's right. For those so that don't know. So he had like I'm, a I'm, FXR dirt bike. He's a diabetic. He left all his shit on the back of his bike like a retard and drove <laughs> off with it. Uh, <laughs> so I had to find a, a pharmacy that would. So he almost died and I got a new bracket. Um, and we met back up just north of Kansas up, City. And then we took off and went to almost Sioux Falls. The bracket broke again. We're at a gas station. And we're just sitting there like, fuck, what are we gonna do? And then this dude drove, like, pulls up in a car and he's like, hey, there's a old motorcycle shop down the road. He gave us the address. He was like, you know, if you need anything, he might help you. We pulled in there. He's like some old salt flat drag racing. Dude, this guy, not just shit. everything. Super fucking dope. And his shop was packed full of shit. And he he's had like, war, war, uh, World War II memorabilia. And then he had like a, a it was like a mini museum. He had some muscle cars. He had a, this war stuff. He had his old Harleys. Then he had a salt flat car, a salt flat car. It was a dual motor panhead or something. I don't know. Like hanging from the rafters that he set some record in like the 80s with. So he's like, I'm pretty sure I had the bracket, but we all have to look for it. So we all look. Nobody could find it. Sierra, his wife, goes, I need to go to the bathroom. So she walks to the bathroom. There's a parts cleaning machine right outside the bathroom before you go to the bathroom. She looks down, she goes, is this it? Literally. It was the exact bracket. And she's on the other side of the shop. We're still digging through boxes <laughs> on the other side of the shop. It was the exact bracket. Yeah. And then he helped us kind of, he figured out what was going on, that the, the, it had some tension. He put some spacers in it. I mean, it helped longer. It helped longer. It didn't break as soon, but yeah. either way, um, going back to the whole original question, my influence often was Justin. <laughs> His FXR, going to the FXR show in 2020 for the first time and seeing all the uh, bikes there. I know uh, that's when Pop's Garage was still a thing and they had a beautiful bike there and there's a mm -hmm. bunch of other badass bikes. Um, it really started sparking my interest and in, which is why I kind of modeled my modern day soft tail after an FXR, kind of as respect if you will. Um, and then um, as far as modern day bikes that I'm into, it's hard to say, man, because there's so many killer bikes. But as far as my rate chopper stance that Justin likes to hate me on. Uh, there's a guy Drop named the Grant front, Lewis. Raise it back. One yeah. the two. There's, there's a guy named Grant Lewis, Lewis on, on and his bike is set up like that. I fucking love it. There's another guy. I think it's like uh, FXR underscore 1989. He's got the same kind of rake on a white FXR. Looks effing incredible. Um, other than that, some other bikes that I really admire. I mean, like he said, FXR Division's always built a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, Pops Garage, all their old builds, which actually the pipe that is on my bike came from an old Pops Garage build, which makes that pipe even cooler to me. Um, but really, Justin and Andy are the, the main reasons why. That's what I like about the FXR platform. You can make it whatever you want. Yeah. Chopper, uh, touring, fucking T, like club style. Whatever you want. And they all work. Do. It all works. It all works. My ultimate FXR, and I don't care, I've, I've loved this bike for 30 something years now would be the hard days of Marvel man. I still to this day love that motorcycle. I don't care what anybody says to me. Oh. I grew up, my dad let me watch that movie when I was like 11 years old. That's the worst fucking one. Let's I some, love that bike. Some solid steel fucking shock on this thing. I'm building one. Next one. Next one's going to be that. Yeah. Well, good thing you only need $36 to build that. <laughs> All right. So the next question that cool you had hopefully we answered your question good enough was who would win an arm wrestling contest bare knuckle paul or levi which is also goes by 
McNasty? McNasty. McNasty. I know he works out a lot, but. Let me tell you a secret about arm wrestling. It's that length of the arm. Yeah. The leverage. Leverage and length. Leverage. Leverage is everything. So, uh, yeah, Paul. Paul's going. I got Paul on it. All right, what's the next question? Uh, next question. Let's go to the Instagram for these. So, your opinions on where the performance scene is heading. So, or moving. Performance All, Harley scene? Yep. Yeah. Where the performance Harley scene is heading. So, for me, I don't, I think it's doing just like every other, tra uh, other trend scene. You know, everybody wants to hate on big wheels and everyone wants to hate on fat tire choppers. There's still shops out there building those bikes. There's still people out there buying those bikes. It, and that's okay. And that's okay. The performance scene, you know, it, it blew up. And, and now some other shops have had to adapt their model to accommodate. So, big wheel bagger shops get shit for transitioning to build performance baggers, but that's where the money goes, that's where the trend goes, and that's oh fucking K, in my opinion. Performance bagger bikes or whatever, I fucking, they're great, you know, because they you can use them, work with them, whatever. I think we're on the peak a little bit. We're gonna start downsloping. You can only do so much, and I've seen some crazy wild ones built, which is great. Um, but I don't give shit to the people that are transitioning with uh, trends. Who cares? Well, you gotta keep you gotta keep in mind most of those shops have uh, employees and stuff like that, and they gotta keep feeding them. They want these shops to stay open. They they got a lot of money invested in their equipment. Example: Arlen S. If they still built the shit from the they built everything. 80s, they were, they were a chopper. In business. They were a chopper shop that turned into a. FXRs in the not in the eighties that turned into you know in the two thousands they were building victories. Uh, nobody nobody ever questions what their where their loyalty is. You know they they're a motorcycle customization shop that goes with the trend and and hats off to them. Um, as far as specific you know I think this kind of gears towards I know a lot of people got butt hurt over Covington's bike on the proper baggers top or whatever. Covington builds great bikes. He puts a lot of quality in it. He was on the biker build off back in 20 years ago. You know what I mean? So he's, he's been building bikes for a lot he of built. years. Amazing bike. Yeah. He's not a big wheel guy. You know, you can't look at him because he built big wheels and called him a big wheel guy. He is a motorcycle builder and he's going to build what the trend currently is at because he understands not just where the money's at, but where the most eyes on him are going to be. And, uh, and it'd be foolish for a, a shop to continue to start with one thing and to continue with that same thing with 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 uh, longevity, if you will, whatever. So to me, I think the performance scene is exactly where it needs to be. Whether it's peaking now or it's still gonna peak or whatever, the performance scene is never gonna go away. Just like big wheels are never gonna go away, fat tire choppers, those things were from the early 2000s. And if you go to Bike Week right now, if you go to Sturgis right now, you're still gonna see fat tire choppers. It's still popular, there's still guys. Yeah. Because you know what it is? There's a nostalgia to it. You might not have any money right now, but right now in this scene, performance bikes are what's happening. And, and you just took notice of it. It might take you 10 years to get your financial or your, uh, your life in the position where you can afford a performance bike. You're gonna build what you wanted 10 years ago or five years or what, however long it, you, know, you were wanting this. Yeah, it might be outdated, but you knew that was your goal. 10 years ago, you set a goal that says, I want this particular motorcycle, whether it's a fat tire, big tire, whatever the hell it is. Hats off to you, man. As long as you're enjoying two wheels and you're not an arrogant asshole, I think. We were talking about this the other day. We're like, so I like motorcycles. Mm -hmm. If I could afford it, I'd have a BMW GS1250. I would have a Ducati. I would have like a fleet, a fleet of bikes, but I can't. I can only have yep. like, my son has all the bikes. I'll have one. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I love motorcycles. We all love motorcycles. Fucking stop hating over the little trends or just being keyboard warriors and worrying about some bullshit. Yeah, Anyways, just let's fucking move on. Yeah, move on from it. The performance scene is what it is. Um, should that affect your riding and your enjoyability of your motorcycle? No, I don't think so at all. When I'm on my bike, the last thing I'm thinking about is what the other guy's building in his garage or whatever's going on. I'm looking forward to the trip I'm taking and the friends that I'm with. I literally have a great time. So we did this. This is my son's project for Christmas. This is actually a Christmas gift. He wanted to take his 110 that he already owned and wanted to tear it down and completely redo it. So we literally, I had a blast. Like painting the motor, powdering the frame, like graphic, everything. You powdered like, the frame? Yeah. Who does that? Uh, uh, actual build. So oh, you okay. can't call it a build unless you yeah. powder the frame. 
<laughs> no, but I had a blast, it, and it's great. We're waiting on the wheels to get done, and uh, I don't know. It's a good time. I enjoy, every, like, redoing this shit. Yeah. I literally watch videos on, like, you ever watch those YouTube videos on refurbishing, like, random shit? Everything. Yeah. I watch all the YouTube. Yeah. It don't matter what it is. Watch My Mechanic on YouTube. That motherfucker you is... You got another YouTube channel? No. Oh, okay. He's way better than I am. That dude is all fucking amazing. Hell yeah. So that's the thing is like, don't get so caught up into what someone else is doing. Be more concerned about what you're doing and how you're enjoying what you have. If you're enjoying your bike, who gives a shit if someone wins a show because they have a bunch of badass paint, a turbo, all the stuff, and they're running stock tires. I think that was or the Or your big... bike didn't get chosen for a fucking IG. Yeah. Page. Who cares? You know, at the end of the day, we're... Anyways, let's move on. Yeah, we'll move on from that. But as far as the former scene, it's not going to go anywhere. Will it downsize? Yes. Will it go anywhere? No, because the bikes are very, very practical. Um, I think that goes without saying. Uh, another question would be, let's see, uh, what color are your Indies? Right now? I think I got gray. Gray got, with red. I got them baby blacks black. on. Uh, is there such a thing as a beginner CNC mill? For someone uh, that wants to get into kind of yeah, doing their own machine. Technically, yeah. So it's, there's a company called Torback. They're cheaper, but they're actually really good machines, smaller, little. You can actually do a tabletop style CNC machine. They have CNC mills, CNC lays. Uh, but yeah, the company's called Tormac. It would it'd be like entry CNC. Hell yeah. Um, so Taylor, we're going to ask your question. What's your favorite Arkansas bike? The one we've seen? Because we've never seen Taylor. The one bike. that actually gets ridden? Let's see. Oh. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, to go back to my favorite Arkansas bike, hmm, that's a tough one. That orange FXR that I'm trying to get. That orange Texas FXR is good <laughs> if, if in our realm, but honestly, Judd Ferguson has a slew of Andy at Howland Customs built choppers, and I love them all. Uh, as far as Andy's chopper builds, my favorite, Josh Cars, the one. Josh Cars is crazy clean. It's it's he's proven that. Not the one he's building now because I hate that one. But the I one like that one. It's got a Nathan Sykes paint job on it. It's fucking old, dirty B. But uh, that's what he wants. I know. He wants a nice clean one. But the one that the one that Josh had built from Andy is fucking. Well, Judd's weird. Judd's panhead that Andy built was one of the Born first free? bikes. I, yeah, was one of the first bikes because uh, you don't know Joe was actually invited as a Born Free builder. No, that was um, People's Champ or People's Champ. And uh, Andy helped him build a bike. I don't think he made it all the way to like the final pick, but they still finished the bike and brought it to Born Free. But I don't think he made it, it was, all the way. No, he didn't make it to the like winning, it, but it was like down to like the last. So couple. he was still in the like he had to go out there. Okay, yeah. But that bike is super incredible, and and it's not just incredible in the sense of uh, it's a beautiful bike. Judd rides the shit out of it, and that bike has been all over. Same thing with Buzz. Buzz has a lot of bikes from that forty eight that he rides everywhere. Uh, Andy has proven himself time and time again to build super durable, reliable motorcycles, and that's why I wanted him to build my bike because, or not my bike, but my motor, because I knew dropping it off to him that I was going to pick it up with with no problems. And those, are, I would say, anything. I don't have a I don't have a single Arkansas favorite bike. Anything that Andy's built, honestly, is probably my favorite. And that's not me being a fanboy. That's me saying that I've watched his bikes not only perform, but the quality and behind them and all the little tedious things that he does is just phenomenal to me. I don't have I love one, one in particular, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a single one. When you talk performance scene, yeah, the, the, the orange uh, FXR4, but it's a super clean, all original, immaculate bike. Uh, Taylor's bike's a beautiful bike. He's the one who asked the question. His bike is immaculate, and it's a very, very cool bike. Um, I think there's like there's six a lot or of, seven miles on it. No, he, he turned double digits. Oh, it's 17. Ten. Oh. 17 or so. <laughs> But it's, uh, there's a lot of beautiful bikes, and um, yeah, so for, for Arkansas, that's uh, kind of our picks, I would say. He's got to put his coat in again. As far as uh, Kyle, so Kyle at the picture of Harley, he has thoughts on the new Ferns and the new CDO models. So I'm assuming he's talking about the big screen. So, and I know you've already had some thoughts on this. I like it, uh, just because I like change. I like the big fairing. The big headlight's going to be a bitch to start changing up and customizing, but I think Somebody can come up with something great. The, the big, big screen, screen, I fucking love it. Uh, it's all in one. I don't care for radios and shit, but like all your gauges and everything, which sounds weird to me saying this because I actually make gauge housings, but everything's in that screen. And I am dying to get one to, I found out more information about it, but like I want to machine a whole housing for it and have it kind of floating 
like I did my other bike, but like this whole big ass new digital screen floating in the air that's supported to the brace, uh, to the interfering. I want to do that so bad, which I was trying to do it this year, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but I'm not mad at the new bikes. No. Um, and I got wind that all of them are going to be this new fairing, but I'm not sure because... They've already dropped some of the 2024s and they're not. I've seen the 24 police bikes. And the, and the Ultra Limited, Road Glide Limited dropped and it's still the same. Old so It's old. still the old same. So. so, and I heard like the new uh, Road Glides are going to be like a Road Glide CVO ST, like all that together in one. Yeah. So, I we, don't know. I think January 24th, they're supposed to drop it all. So, we'll know more then, but I 100% agree with them. I think change is good. Um, if you don't like the new shit, then buy the old shit. Like it's, it's so no one's telling you to go yeah. buy a brand new Harley Davidson, uh, old Harley Davidson, a used one. There's a lot of guys out there like Taylor that only put 17 miles on their bike in the entire ownership. So you can definitely find those bikes for great deals on marketplace. And if you don't like the new Farron, get an old Farron. But Jeremy did text me yesterday and he hates the new Farron cause it's like super floppy. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to paint one. Cause it's so open. There's yeah. no support. Yeah. Which might make it challenging to do like the uh, XO scale like you did on the Minty bike. Right, so do it. Yeah. All right. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, another question. So speaking of Jeremy, Jeremy said, fuck, marry, or kill. Jetty Millhouse himself. I need better options. Next question. All right. So uh, <laughs> it's Jeremy again, but that one's, uh, we're not going to go with that one. Um, do, 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 do. So with the with the new models and everything, do you see do you see with the, I, I think I know what Millhouse is, or Thundermax is trying to ask with this one. I know a couple of years ago um, Steve Chamberlain tried to do like a skinny tire build off, and it was it was successful for the most part. I think mm -hmm. a handful of guys jumped in, and I think they carried it on to another year too. They did, but they the, what's weird is they, and I understand where they're trying to go with it. They're trying to put a dollar amount cap. Well, they were trying to do all those other rules, but remember the year that you ended your bike was 2021 in Sturgis at the Hardcore Show, and they gave out a skinny tire award because they said, oh, this is the only bike that had the skinny tire on it, but your gray road glide was clearly in the show. It, Again, th I don't worry about those. But either way, um, he, the question is, do we see any other build-offs coming up, uh, like other people trying to jump on this build-off tour type of thing? And So I know the, the hamsters. Yeah, yeah, hamsters. I was about to say yellow shirts. Well, yeah, they, so they the do a build off every year. The yellow shirts. The yellow shirts. No, the hamsters, they do their, and I just actually learned like a couple months ago that it's an open build for anybody. I thought it was like closed off and then supposedly it's like open for anybody. Anyways, I don't know the details about that. Um, and then R is the FXR Tour, which is all FXR frames. Everything's open after that, but it's also the first one we, Jason and I picked each builder the nine builders picked the 10th builder for a garage builder. This year, we, we asked all the current builders to pick their builders for the next year. So that's how we got our nine. And then those nine will pick the 10th garage builder, uh, which I think is a great idea. Mm. Um, and then that's the only build, uh, no, there's another show going on right now. Sheldon from uh, Clockwork. Oh, no, no, that's the smoke out. That's, that's what I'm talking that's about. The, so smoke out's been going on for like, Two decades now. But it, they're doing a build They're doing an event bail off. But it's like narrowing yep, yep. it down. Um, but Taylor City's doing one as well. And of course, Born Free always does a build off. They do their yeah, by builders as yeah. well as the. Uh, and then Harley Davidson, they're both for Born Free. Missed, missed <laughs> the cut. We missed <laughs> the cut. They just dropped the names. Uh, Not saying Justin was in the running, but <laughs> they threw his name around. They knew who he was. No big deal. Um, Anyways, that's, that's all the build off. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the questions. Let's uh, let's kind of wrap this up. I know we're already probably at like the two hour mark. As far as 2024 goes, uh, we have some things already in the work. I know there's a big show going on. Also, we got the polar ride coming up. Um, you're not going to be a part of it. On. I'm going to stay here and work. Uh, I have some big projects I need to finish. Um, also, I'm just going to run down my year real quick. Mama Tried Show, I'm definitely going yep. this year. I'm we'll super stoked about it. Um, my son's FXR build, I'm super excited about that. Uh, might go to the Donnie Smith show with Jeremy, I'm not sure yet. And then hand built show, I'll probably end up going to that for sure. The Kentucky show, I cannot remember the name of it. I don't remember what the name of it is. I but meant to look so, it up. I can look it up while you're talking. But Jake and Milhouse from Thundermax, um, 
got me into that show and I'm gonna set up there. And we're gonna do this huge East Coast ride. Uh, me, Scott, Jetty, Jeremy, I think just those four, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna go up to New York. Uh, so we're gonna hang out with Indian Larry, <laughs> Ashley, and then John Snyder from Metal Innovations. They're all north from New York, which I cannot wait for that trip. That's the most, so I'm setting up my VXR to like travel more on it. So that, the whole premise around that trip was me and Justin were talking about. Uh, oh, that's another question someone asked. It's like, what's your favorite state to ride in? And um, for me, I was in Utah. Utah, as far as states that I've ridden in, I've never been to the East Coast, but I think me and Justin both can agree that I, we're probably most excited about this East Coast trip. So we've talked about it. And I've early, been to New York, like Manhattan twice, uh, Brooklyn, all that, but I never got to ride there. And, that's, That's what I'm excited about. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Massachusetts, all that stuff as a kid. I've been to Washington, D.C. and everything, but I've never been on a motorcycle or as an adult. Uh, I think I went to Maryland when I was like 19, and that's probably the furthest northeast or whatever you want to call it that I've been in the past 20 years. So uh, we've talked about it. We're going to do an East Coast trip. Uh, there's a, the Kentucky trip with Thunderman. Are we going to start in Kentucky or end in Kentucky? No, we're ending in Kentucky. So we're going to do our trip. Start Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, we're going to, I'm going to drive up with trailer to Kentucky leave that there we're going to ride from there do our east coast trip try to come see clem in detroit ride back to um the kentucky, kentucky do that show there and then come back home yeah so uh, the premise of this trip is thunder max reached out ask us if we can help them with the there's a apparently there's a big show that goes on at the along the river between the indiana and kentucky border uh they were there the past two years they want more performance bikes there so they reached out to us, asked us if we can help out. Unfortunately, it's the same exact weekend as the East Coast Jam, but we already committed to We're helping gonna, Jake. Yeah, we'll be coming back as everybody's going to the East Coast, East Coast Jam. But because of us starting on Memorial Day weekend, the weekend before the event, we're gonna be able to take off. We're gonna bring the truck and trailer to Kentucky and then take off on our FXRs, ride uh, straight to Washington, D.C., hopefully meet Je Jeremy from Lucky Strike and anyone else that wants to go. We're all riding small, small bikes. bikes. So, yeah. uh, FXR, FXR. Which I always ride a small bike, so it's nothing new for me. It's super big for him. Um, and then Jenny's riding his Dyna, Jeremy's riding his soft tail, which is over there, which is all done, ready to go. And then we're gonna head to straight to Brooklyn from Washington, D.C. We're gonna let John the Painter, and Bob Seeger, and all those guys show us around Brooklyn. Hopefully the grimiest parts of Brooklyn is what we really want to see. My goal is I want to I want to experience New York. Uh, I want to ride the sidewalks. I want to yeah. get all the back roads. I, I want to see what all – so I've been watching a lot of the old biker build-offs lately and uh, watched the any layer ones, obviously. Uh, I want to see the parts where, like, yeah, you're jumping curbs and you're, you know, dodging potholes. And I want to see all the crap. So yeah. – uh, we're going to leave there. We're going to head over into C Connecticut, pick up with uh, Ashley. Ashley might come into Brooklyn, he said. He doesn't know 100% yet. But if not, he's going to jump in with us in Connecticut uh, and ride with us through to Massachusetts. We'll be against the Atlantic Ocean. I don't know what the exact town that John's in, but it's near Boston. John we'll Snyder, he has my dream shop. Um, so I just can't wait to see his shop. Yeah, we want to tour his shop, and we're going to take you guys along with us. Uh, see that. And depending on the time, weather, and all that, we might try to shoot up to Maine, at least just a, the new Maine, New Hampshire, all that stuff, come back around. But our biggest goal is leaving John's shop. We want to try to make it all the way back to Detroit to hang out with Clem and those guys. And I want to ride Detroit. And ride Detroit, the same thing. We want the grimy, dirty. We talked to those guys during the uh, FXR tour, and we said we want a tour of, like, Detroit, Detroit. So yeah. he said, hey, bring it. We got you. So we're hoping to do that and then make it all the way back to the Kentucky event uh, in time on the bikes to be able to support that event and then back home. So I think that's a, that's going to kick it off. That's going to be the Memorial day weekend is when we start our big trip, but the weekend after Memorial day will be in Kentucky at that event. Stay tuned. We'll drop more information on Instagram as well as, uh, Jake and Ryan from Millhouse from, uh, Thunder Max. Bill. It's Millhouse. Nobody knows Ryan. But yeah, so after Kentucky, after the, the New York trip, after Kentucky born, born free California for me, uh, Sturges, so that's my due date for my son's FXR, uh, twin cam FXR, nothing too crazy. Um, twin cam FXR, nothing too cra crazy, right? Inverted, swing arm. Yeah, just, uh, 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 Jeremy painted. Uh, yeah, uh, so. 14 year olds want to have a better bike than 90% of you guys watching this video. Life lessons. And I'm not talking shit to you guys, I'm talking shit to this guy. I know. He's setting kid. his son up for failure because He's now his son. He's a good kid, bro. Um, What's this dirt bike over here? I know. Well, you, do good. Nice my you get good. 
Um, so that's Sturgis. We're going. To, uh, Hudson and I are going to trailer up there, and then just ride in Sturgis, and obviously go to like Joe's show, FXR show, the best FXR, FXR show ever, in my opinion. Um, Sturgis. Sturgis is the shit for me. Sturgis, Born Free California, Born Free Texas, those three things right there are industry standards for me. Um, but then after Sturgis is all on board for FXR Tour, Born Free Texas. Um, and then, which is great. So Jason and I are going to be able to promote it more this year because we're not building bikes for it. So we can actually like be more involved filming, hopefully at the end, get a really good video, which our video from this previous year should be out. Yep, in the same. next few weeks, hopefully, Saxon. If you're watching at this point. Yeah. So, anyways, next, next year's gonna be fucking great. great. I'm, I'm super excited. excited. Also, so, so not, not to get weird and sad, sad but like my dad, dad passed away um, almost two weeks ago. New Year's Day, basically. Yeah. Yeah, on the first, and um, so, so he gave Hudson his uh, '97 Fat Boy, and Hudson and I both agreed, let's cholo it and build it out so i'm going to try to do that this year alongside these other builds so the total opposite would i ever do ape hangers air ride and it's not the spokes. opposite he literally had this in his road glide ape hangers 21 inch spoke big stereo stretch bags yeah no he's going back to his roots no <laughs> stereo and all that stuff but i i am air ride in front and back long fenders Big spokes, big wheel, a painter. I'm excited to see that bike build. Uh, I'm excited to see any bike build, but I'm that's going to be the one yeah. that um, Hudson and I never get rid of, um, just to keep it along with the family. Um, but I am excited, and it kind of like makes us, you know, thrilled to, to build something together. So, yeah. as far as me for 2024 uh, with the big East Coast trip, I, I, I'm super excited for that. Um, but for Sturgis, the wife and I are definitely riding to Sturgis again this year. She's super excited about it. And on our ride, we're gonna to go to Sturgis. We're only gonna be there for about two days. We're gonna be there for the FXR show and then Monday for the hardcore show. Tuesday morning, we're gonna get up, we're gonna leave and we're gonna head out towards um, Yellowstone. Uh, Yellowstone. So we're gonna head out to Yellowstone and depending on how that goes, some people says it's kind of crappy right now. Some people say it's overpopulated since COVID and it's hard to get in, whatever. Um, if it sucks and we get there and we see a little bit and we're over it, we might continue through Idaho into Washington. I, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. But um, just like Justin said earlier in this video, when they did their Sturgis trip, they kind of winged it. That's the same thing my wife and I did with our West Coast trip. We just kind of winged it. We didn't set the, the rooms for the next day until the day prior. So we, we kind of mapped our trip out as we went along. And that's what our Sturgis trip is going to be. We know we're going to leave here and make it to Sturgis. I think we're going to go from here to Mitchell, which is where Clockworks is at. I know they always do a big pre-party there. And then into Sturgis, stay there for two, two and a half days, and then make the rest of the trip. So that's our another big goal. Um, I'm shooting to try to make the trip with Justin out to Born Free, California, just to experience that. Uh, I'm definitely trying to do Mama Tried as well. Um, Mom, and, Mama Tried's in the books. Yeah. We should do it. Yeah, like, we're doing it. Done. I think we're doing it. I mean, it's only 10 hours away from here, so it's super easy, uh, easy breezy. And then on top of that, um, I did sell my soft tail. So unfortunately, the guy sent a deposit on it. That bike will be going away, which leaves the uh, void of what do I do next? And I think this year is going to bring forth a much slower build because I, I, I did the bike that I currently have really, really quick. Not quick. I mean, it still took me about a month and a half of just tearing down and building it back up. But I want to do a twin cam swap just like they're doing with Hudson's bike. And it's probably going to get dragged out over the channel because I don't want to rush it. And I, I really don't know what I want, like what style of motorcycle I want him building a cholo bike. I kind of want a cholo bike now. So it's like, I don't, I don't know, but, um, that's going to happen. And then the FXR tour, I'm riding the FXR tour. I'm not driving a truck, no matter what Justin says. Same. I, I'm, I'm actually riding that as well. And our, as of now, what we talked about, it's still almost a thousand miles because to kind of complete the same rules that we started off with, but it's not like blasting 500 miles on the freeway. It's more, we are talking about starting at like Paul's shop, uh, Bear Knuckle Paul, and like kind of Missouri to Frank's shop across from yeah. Missouri, kind of zigzagging down through Arkansas. A lot of these old back roads, like smooth. We're hoping to make that ride a little better for you guys, for those that want to attend. And just like last time, it's an open invitation. Anyone can ride in the FXR tour. Um, you don't have to have an FXR. It's encouraged, but you don't have to have it. However, just be aware that if there is another documentary being filmed, which 
the talks are of, are of it happening again, that they do try to keep the builders in the front and uh, well, the builders in the front and FXR division and all their guys in the middle and then everyone else in the back. So we'll, uh, we'll come up with a better plan for that. But either way, man, 2024 is going to shape up to be a badass year. We're, we're in January and we already got most of our year planned out and anything can happen because I wasn't expecting to own, I actually owned two bad boys last year, as well as the chopper, as well as the Daytona, as well as the FXR. I changed a lot of bikes. All those you, bikes were forever bikes. Probably. Yeah, they were all forever bikes. And you guys didn't see any of them because they weren't really, it was just me and my stupid collection of motorcycles. So uh, I think 2024, I don't know what it's going to bring, but I do know Daytona's out of the question, unfortunately. I, it, I get that question a lot. It, it's, it's nothing just, bad about it. It's yeah. just with everything else going that, on. If I eliminate that, then I can, I can spend more time elsewhere. Well, so. the, the, the biggest reason is, is Mom and Tried is at the end of February, and Daytona starts March 1st. So it's hard. It? To, yeah. Oh. It's that close together. So I'd much rather do Mama Tribe because I've never done it before. I'd much rather do something new than something I've already done. Mama Tribe in that winter time, the, it's amazing. It's in, yeah, that's what I heard. And I'm just. I've been I, twice so, so far. I'm trying to make 2024 a year of like new stuff. You know what I mean? So the East Coast trip for us is going to be. Man, I don't want to talk shit because my West Coast trip with my wife was amazing, but to be with your friends and stuff like that on this big trip is going to be super incredible. And I think it's going to be something that I'll never forget. And I'm looking forward to hopefully a lot of you guys can kind of tune in. If you see us, we're going to post it up on Instagram. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Join in with us if you want to ride. We might try to like if we go to these small towns on the way up and shit. You know. Yeah, we'll pick a bar and like tell you guys to hang out and come up and all that stuff. So, uh, but either way, we're going to cut the video off here. I think uh, I think we. Spoke enough for the past two hours, it seems like. I'm almost one bottle in, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm only four beers in. And I need four to eat bro. I need a steak. But either way, um, hope you guys enjoyed this little thing. I hope we kind of do this a little bit more. I don't want to call this a podcast. It's more of a Q&A. It felt like a goddamn podcast. It's definitely a podcast time link, but hopefully this is a little Q&A kind of uh, a recap or whatever you want to call it. And we had fun. I had and, fun. I, and I do want to say thank you, Scott, for all the work that you put in for the YouTube because to be honest I just I'm here and there on it and that is one of my goals for this coming year is to be more involved obviously I'm not going to edit and all that shit that's on him but um, I do want to be more involved in it and um, yeah so there you go guys you get to see the bills that are coming up I have one by choice <laughs> no. not by choice <laughs> Appreciate you guys staying along for the hour 17. What was that thing? Fuck off. This is two. That's the second battery. Oh, man. All right. I feel tired. Love y'all. Love you. Appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. All right. Y'all have fun. Take care.